Good evening and welcome to Batter Days in the Back Cave with Omni Dog. That's me. And the Minister of Comics. That's him. How's it going, Minister? I'm doing great. I'm really excited being back after like a month, month and a half. We've had a <laughs> hiatus to, of some sorts uh, for various reasons, but we're happy to be back. We have a spotlight on Jeff John Superman. I'm sure we'll have tangents about random stuff. And we have a brand new segment, don't we, Jess? Yeah, it's pretty exciting for the two of us. I don't know that the audience will care, but that's okay because you and I care. It's only going to be two minutes long, but it's um, uh, it's observational humor. And it's called it's What's dangerous. Wrong with Tyler Blunt? Right. Tyler Blunt's on vacation right now. And so we want to start this new segment to see how long it takes him to realize we're doing this. It could take a week. It'll probably take a lot longer than that. Probably take him at least six months, I would think. So we'll start off with our first thing about Tyler Blunt that annoys us. And Jess, we're going to talk about deflection tonight, aren't we? Deflection. Two yes. minutes on deflection. Yeah. Super Squad D Toys is his uh, uh, YouTube and uh, Instagram handle. And he will not answer, uh, this is Tyler Blunt, he will not answer a direct question a lot of the time. He And it it's obvious when he's uncomfortable with the question because he immediately deflects onto something else. Or if you make fun of him, he'll immediately deflect on making fun of you. <laughs> oh, that's right. But yeah. yeah. If, if you ask him to do something and say, hey, what about this? And he doesn't want to answer, he'll just like send you a picture. He'll send you a meme. He'll say something else. And we're like, no, no, no. Don't deflect. Answer the question. So that is our first segment of what's <laughs> wrong with Tyler Blunt. And hopefully this will be a long journey of him not realizing it. <laughs> he won't. I really he'll doubt it. We might, be, we might be in our graves by the time he notices, Jess. <laughs> he may never notice. Unless somebody tells him. So, Jess, uh, you've been having some fun the past couple of days, haven't you? As you've named it, it's been two weeks of Omnidog. Uh, I'm, I'm a bachelor for two weeks. My wife is visiting her sisters. Right now, they're in Mexico. Uh, I just got a, a picture of them on the beach, my wife on the beach, uh, right at the water's edge. She is extremely happy, and so am I. <laughs> I can do whatever I want, whenever I want, with no interruption. First of all, I love my wife. Yes, I do. But I have no interruptions on anything I want to do. I can read or watch TV or go to bed and take a nap. I can do whatever. No errands either. What's that? No errands? Yeah, no errands. Uh, only my own, yeah. Well, no before she gets back, you'll have to make sure everything's clean. That's the only thing. Well, I, that's not really a problem because I th I like things neat. I'm I like my areas neat. I like the kitchen picked up, so that's not really an issue. It's probably my diet that is going to suffer the worst. I used to be the sh cook in the house, and and now she's taken that over. And within a year, I've totally lost all my skills. So <laughs> I. I mean, I had a regular breakfast today of like sausage and eggs, but I think that I followed it up with peanut M&Ms. Um, <laughs> I, I can't even remember how to make dinner. So there's like this whole freezer full of food for me. And she said it reminded her of her mother back in the 60s, leaving her father for a couple of weeks for vacation. Her dad was had no skill in the kitchen and her mom would leave notes on how to do everything, you know, what to warm up when. And so, yeah, I, um, I'm not, I'm probably not going to be eating properly, but everything will be picked up. I can't imagine most husbands left to their own devices for two weeks would eat that well. Um, yeah, we're probably hunters and gatherers. <laughs> I mean, hunters and, um, foragers, uh, at heart um just pull a tyler blunt and go uh, go through the drive through every day uh, i don't first of all i don't have as many choices as tyler does i live in the nation's capital and we have jack diddly compared to tyler in dumble dd -D, mississippi he has <laughs> like every drive through possible um and i don't have 
I, I we really don't have anything. Um, we used to have a Checkers, but it got replaced by a Starbucks. Never even heard of Checkers before. Oh yeah, Checkers was good. Um, and well, we don't have a Sonic, which is where he likes to get, where Tyler likes to get his. Uh, what are they? Blasts? Yeah, Sonic Blasts. Okay. Um, and doesn't Sonic have a, a, like an ice cream slushy drink too? Yeah, they're really known for their drinks. Their food's terrible, but their drink selection is good. Their drink and like dessert selection. Everything okay. else isn't very good. Like if you want to get a burger there, just don't do it. Yeah. It's not a good choice. Um, yeah, Lloyd brings up a good point of food delivery options. Um, <clears throat> I don't, mm, I, I'm not a big eater of carbs. Bread and pizza upset my stomach, so it's hard for me to to get food to um, food to be brought. Uh, do, like Door, DoorDash has good options, um, but I I'm not a, the kind of guy that's going to get like pizza every night. That pizza upsets your teeth too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> old pizza. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad I was there live for that. Oh, you were? Were you there? Remember, yeah. It was some random show. I forget what it was. It was like it was like probably like what four years ago at this point. Um, Where you chip your tooth on pizza. I broke it. Yeah, I had to get a a, a, a implant for it. Yeah, I feel bad laughing now, but it's still kind of funny looking back on. Oh it. no, you can laugh. It was funny. <laughs> it was weird. I mean, it was just I've I've had the weirdest things happen to me on Omni Bros. It's just so weird. That's like, uh, I think me and Tyler were telling you about a show that we both like, Impractical Jokers, where there's four friends who like to pull pranks and they have to do like different competitions. And but two of the guys on the show, they've had teeth fall out during <laughs> during the show. Like randomly just fall out. Fall so out like, or get knocked like, out? Fall out of their mouth. Like randomly just fall out of their mouth. I'm like, I'm not <laughs> sure how bad you're taking care of your teeth to have a tooth just fall out for no reason. <laughs> Well, I used to love Jackass and the things they do to each other in that house. Um, I, I did, so I, I'd probably like Impractical Jokers. I love Bad Grandpa. That movie was hilarious. Oh, I love that movie. It was so. I think funny. I liked that because it had like some heart to it. It had a story to it. It wasn't yeah. just a bunch of guys hitting each other. There actually was like an emotional through line, which is kind of surprising for a movie like that. But there's a one scene in that movie where they're in the diner booth, if you remember what I'm talking about. Yeah. My wife and I in her old apartment were on the ground rolling around laughing. <laughs> it was so unexpected. It was so funny. It's hilarious. <laughs> hey, we have a new viewer. New to the channel. Love your videos. Nice. I raise a root beer to you, Omni Dog. Thank you, Dominic. That's awesome. I know you're not drinking pop really anymore, but would you have a root beer float to celebrate over the next couple of weeks? Or are you done with root beer floats forever? Um, no, I, I I would have one. Yeah, uh, I have ice cream in the house, but it's not. And I have root beer, but I don't have. I need vanilla ice cream. Uh, so I, I yeah, I'd have a root beer. That's a good idea. I'll have a root beer float. The best, I think, the best popular brand root beer for root beer floats is probably A and W, right? No, no. I mean, popular like stuff you can go buy at the store. Uh, well, I would say AW mug and then Barks is at the bottom. I, God, I would, you would have to have a gun to my head for me to drink any of those. I really hate those root beers. I like AW. Well, that's, I, it's personal taste. So I think it's fine. That's fine with me. I like AW at the restaurant pulled from the tap. That's good. That's really good. It's good, fresh for it in their restaurants. A lot of the ones that you have, you have as favorites, I can't find around here. So I got to kind of use what I can. All I can really find that you like is it's not Sprecker's, it's not Frost Top. What's the other one? It comes Boylan's? in a four pack. Yeah, Boylan. Yeah. That's the only one I can find around here that you really like. I got a sponsorship a few years ago when I was doing root beer reviews. And I don't think it was Boylan. I'll have to think. Somebody sent me a case. And said I just needed to promote their root beer company. Um, Did you ever do it? Sorry? <laughs> Did you ever do it? Oh, yeah. I, I remember had, that. They sent me a whole case of root beer. And I had a bunch of shows where I said, this episode sponsored by this root beer. And, um, yeah, Michael Lombardo's got it right. Yeah. 
I think we wanted you to get sponsored by Goo Goo Clusters for a while, too. <laughs> oh, those are so good. That's what I need to do. Go get some Goo Goo Clusters. I still need to order those off of Amazon, but on Amazon, it comes like a huge pack. I don't know if I can eat, eat that many Goo Goo Clusters. I don't, I don't think you should get them from Amazon. You should order them from Goo Goo Cluster, the, the company, because from Amazon, they come uh, really old. Oh, gross. You can tell they're old. It's they, also a huge pack. It's not like a pack of five. It's like a pack of like, like 20 or 30 or something. It's like way oh, too much. Okay, well, you need, to, you need to go to the Goo Goo Cluster company and order like a five pack from them. They're, they're kind of expensive, but they're fresh. Um, Amazon's have sat in a warehouse for like a year and a half. Austin Caldwell wants to know if you drink cream soda. Uh, yeah, I like I like cream soda. Where is that? Oh, yeah. I can yeah. only have one cream soda. If I have too more, if I have too much, I'll get sick. It kind of makes your stomach upset if you drink more than one. At least for me, it does. Oh, okay. It's kind of uh, like it's pretty rich. I love cream soda, and uh, Tyler has helped me uh, learn. To uh, love Dr. Pepper cream soda. That's really good. Um, oh, speaking of um, snacks and drinks, I was at Target today, and at their little cafe area, they sold a small bag of that Twix popcorn that we ate. Oh, that's uh, – didn't Michael Lombardo send us that? I can't remember who it was. It might have been. I think – I think Michael sent us that. There's, I had a couple people send us, send me some. I think it, was it Travis Gilmer who sent it? Oh, maybe Travis sent us that. I can't we'll remember. In Twix popcorn, and wasn't there Oreo? Oreo yeah, Oreo popcorn. Oh, <laughs> it was really good. Those were the days. Kenny Crayley has a question for you. Yeah, I'm not sure I can answer it. What was your reaction when Carol Danvers was as Ms. Marvel in the late 70s? I've been getting into reading more stories on Carol Danvers as Ms. Marvel, Captain Marvel. Um, I Honestly, I can't say that I read Ms. Marvel off the newsstand. Anything I've read of her, Kenny, has been recent. Um, and when I say recent, uh, within the past, since 2004, 14 the past seven years so i i like uh, a lot of carol danvers stories um i i don't I, I seem to be one of the few people who don't dislike kelly sue DeConnick's uh captain marvel I, I i read it and i enjoyed it but it's not popular um lots of people love to hate it so i don't I guess it's a matter of taste, uh, but I didn't read um, Ms. Marvel or Captain Marvel off the newsstand. I haven't really heard much about Captain Marvel lately in comic books. I don't even know who writes the current series or who's written current series, who, who's written recent series. I'm not sure. I don't know if you've kept up with that or not. Uh, I hmm. I ha that's not a series I I read really regularly. Right. I, I I feel like Kelly Thompson. Um, I feel like Kelly Thompson wrote a really good Captain Marvel, but I I, I can't remember. I really want to read Kelly Thompson's Black Widow because you were hyping it up for me. It's good. It's only five. Actually, it's right here because I haven't filed it away yet. It's really good. Everyone should get this. Uh, Black Widow, Kelly Thompson. It's super skinny. Is it an ongoing or a miniseries? Uh, it's, I think it's up to issue seven. Yeah. Okay. It's an ongoing. It's not on Hoopla yet. I've been waiting for the drop on Hoopla. Mm. I do want to read it though. I love the Mark Wade and Chris Somney. Oh series. yeah. That's, that has to be the peak of Black Widow. Didn't we? Yeah. There's an ad for it here in the back. Didn't we review that? I think you and Tyler did. Oh, Tyler and I did. Okay. Um, let's see. Endman 40 says, Captain Marvel from the 70s was pretty nice. I read a few issues of that as part of my Spider-Man read-through. It was pretty interesting. Okay, that's good to know. And it was Michael Lombardo who sent us the popcorn. It was the, or I thought so. Oreo and Twix popcorn for me for the review you did. Okay, think, yeah. Thanks. I think Travis Gilmer sent me something else in the mail. I think I, I'm conflating the two. I, I'm pretty sure Travis Gilmer found some for us too, but uh, okay. Michael did it in time for us to review it. Uh, okay, got it. 
Yeah. yeah I, think, I think, I think some other people, I think more than one person sent you popcorn. I think only one person sent me popcorn. Well, I am Omni dog. I wasn't the minister of comics yet. No, you weren't. So maybe <laughs> now, were, you maybe now famous, I want some more respect. <laughs> you weren't a famous Instagrammer yet. Right. Um, Jess, I picked up Astro City after your recommendation, and now I'm on Local Heroes. Nice. Awesome series. Only missing mm, Dark Age 1 and 2 and Ordinary Heroes, but those are very far, f- hard to find at, the, at a decent price. Yeah, those those uh, Dark Age 1 and 2 um, have been hard to find forever. Um, I, I, don't, I don't have it here to look at. That's upstairs in the library where we have my our sweater closet <laughs> well you said that wait how did it come up i can't remember how it came up oh, like, oh, uh, i found this in our sweater closet and i was like wait I, one minute just wait don't go <laughs> past this you have a closet just for sweaters we we have i found a box of comics that i had been searching for down here and i found them up in the sweater closet which was really weird i don't know why they were there but that's where i found uh, the first appearance of Silk and the first appearance of Spider Gwen and a bunch of other comics that I had been dying to have uh, sent out and graded. And I found them, I guess, Thursday or something. Uh, and uh, yeah, you were uh, amazed. That, <laughs> yeah, you said, whoa, hold on. What? A closet for sweaters? The height of affluence. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's in the library upstairs. It has built-in sh- shelves for books, and there's a closet there. And so we just it's it's not like we have Jeeves the Butler open <laughs> the sweater closet. It's just where we put our sweaters. Yeah, I was gonna say, why are you so worried about eating well the next two weeks? You have your butler get you a sweater out of the closet and <laughs> some dinner. <laughs> Who doesn't have a sweater closet? Says Frazier. <laughs> I guess I'm the only rich. I'm the only non-rich person who has a sweater closet. <laughs> now, does this sweater closet have the awesome sweaters from your '90s TV show that you were on? Um, some of them, yeah. Some of them, um, wool sweaters tend to shrink on their own, like while they're in the closet. Regular, and some I've out- outgrown. I, I admit physically I've gotten heavier, uh, but some of the, uh, I, I've, I think I still have maybe one or two, but I mean, I was back in my thirties. That was like almost 30 years ago. So you were in T-bone shape back then. I was, I was as skinny as T-bone. Yeah, He was telling me, uh, he always annoys his wife, uh, by talking about how he's like, if I want to lose two or three pounds, I just won't have my six bowls of cereal at night and I'll lose that three pounds in a day. <laughs> And I'm like, I hate you too. Oh, he's <laughs> he's got a super high metabolism. It's crazy. I'm always yeah. jealous of people like that. Yeah, and he eats garbage. I mean, you saw he sent us pictures yesterday of what he and his family stopped at a gas station for. It was a bag of garbage. $27 worth of gas station <laughs> snacks. That's a lot of money. <laughs> I don't. I think you're giving him too much credit that it was for him and his family. I think it was just for him. <laughs> his wife and daughter probably were starving in the car while he was <laughs> chomping down on Funyuns and gummy bears. Yeah. Um, Jess, do you have a special spot for all of the comic T-shirts? I do. Um, that's in my comic T-shirt closet. No, it's in uh, it's in a closet that has a shelf where I put uh, pajama. I sleep in a t-shirt t-shirts. Uh, so there's pajama t-shirts and next to it is comic t-shirts. So I have a shelf for those. So yes, good question. And Hey, then we're going to make you a Superman fan by the end of the episode. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're not a soups fan. Hayden. Um, I think everyone can become a Superman fan if they read the right book or watch the right program. Right. Were you, a recent Superman convert or have you always been a Superman fan? I'm not like Hayden or Kristen where I hated Superman. I just thought he was a little bit too overpowered, a little bit too unrealistic, a little bit too boring. But then I read Superman secret identity and that kind of caused me to look at this character in a different way. Right. And I think a lot of times people feel like they can't relate to Superman, but they can relate to Batman. But if you think about it, 
none of us are really billionaires, so we can't really relate to Bruce Wayne that much. But all of us, like Clark, like Clark Kent, can feel like we're outsiders. We can feel like we don't belong. Clark yeah. is like the ultimate outsider, where he wants to be human more than anything else. He doesn't want to be special. He wants to be like us. So he has to settle for being the best version of us and giving us an aspirational example for us to look up to. So I think if you look at him, look at it in that way, it's a lot more relatable. He's not just some superpowered god who can do anything that he wants, even though he kind of is. He's also an alien outsider who wants to belong and fit in like we all do. Uh, Gio says, I mean, he's no Aquaman, but he's still cool. And we do need to have Gio on it to give us a lesson on Aquaman, Jess, because I need to read more Aquaman. Uh, I think that's a good idea. We we should have a reading list. Um, Mr. Awesome was saying this is, instead of batter days, it's more like super days in the super cave. Um, it's more like tangent cave in the tangent cave. I don't know. Well, I don't know what we call it. Tangents in the tangent cave is what the show has become. Carly says, speak for yourself. Apparently, Jess is a millionaire with a sweater closet. <laughs> now, there's no coats. It's just sweaters. There's no crisscrossing of other things. Uh, we no have, hoodies, just sweaters. We have a coat closet. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have, do you have a do you have, do you have a glove closet too? Do you have gloves <laughs> hanging there. We have a special a closet. We have a special shelf for shoes in the coat closet and, and in the mudroom. Yes, I do have a coat closet. Okay, well, I think everybody has a coat closet. Yeah. Oh, uh, and Michael uh, says we need to sell Hayden on the Tomasi Superman omnibus. Has that come out yet, or is that soon? I can't remember. Uh, I don't I'm know. I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it because I have the hardcovers. So right. I'm not sure about that. Um, he says I like Smallville and Man of Steel was okay in comics. I do love Super Sons. That's good. So at least there's like maybe a little opening there for us to help you like Superman even more. Well, Hayden might like the new Tom Taylor run that's coming up. He's going to be doing a Jonathan Kent as Superman run. So that could be interesting for him. Wow. I, hmm. I didn't know it was going to be Jonathan Kent all grown up as Superman. So they're, they're not de-aging him. They're up, up aging him. I need to do more research. I'm not sure if this is replacing the current Superman title, or if it's going to be like alongside of it, kind of like a future world type of thing. I'm not really sure what's going on with it. Me and you are so out of touch with what's going on in comics. Like right now, I'm more like a year behind. Yeah. Same here. I just got my death metal two death metal trade paperbacks in the mail today. Yeah. I just need one more that I'm good to go. And it hasn't been released yet. I think it's coming out in a couple of weeks. The final are, trade. Are there four? There's three trades and one deluxe hardcover. <laughs> Of course. I kind of prefer having three trades and one deluxe than one deluxe, two standard hardcovers, and one trade paperback. At least yeah. there's some uniformity of some kind. Yeah. So it is what it is. Um, I ha have you had breakfast for dinner yet, just now that your wife is gone? I had I had regular breakfast for breakfast this morning. I don't uh, I'm not a big fan of breakfast for dinner unless it's waffles. Like Belgian wa ooh, Belgian waffles. Now I could go to IHOP or Denny's. Those are my two breakfast choices. Uh hmm. I bet there's even better breakfast choices. I have I some really good breakfast uh places for you, Jess, whenever you come and visit someday. Okay. We have this one place by us called Totens, and they have this these two different breakfast orders called the Little Owl. And the Big Owl. And I can't even finish the Little Owl, let alone the Big Owl. What's it, comes the with, it comes with three different plates. One plate is just these, this, these huge pancakes. The other plate is eggs and bacon or sausage, whatever you want. The other plate is toast. So it comes with three plates of all this food. <laughs> and I can never finish even the Little Owl. I've never even tried the Big Owl because I know I'm not even going to finish it. Not even come close. Uh, I couldn't eat the toast, but I could eat the other things. Um, there's actually a good breakfast place in, in Old Town, Alexandria. Uh, but I'll wait till Patty comes back to go there for breakfast. Um, I feel weird sitting down in a restaurant by myself. <laughs> I just would. 
Do you judge people who go to eat by themselves? No, I just, um, I'm just not comfortable doing it. I mean, when I was single, that's all I did. So it's fine. There are some places you can like sit down real quick to eat. Like it's like fast food, but like, a, yeah. like going to like a nice restaurant by yourself is a little bit strange. I, I just wouldn't feel comfortable. I wouldn't judge anybody that did it. I just, I just wouldn't feel comfortable myself. I'm the kind of guy that doesn't understand why people feel weird about going to the movies by yourself because you're just sitting in a theater not talking and you can just walk out. Whenever Before Sam was born, I would see movies a lot on Fridays when I had my day off. I would go at 11 in the morning, get popcorn for five bucks, you know, just see a movie. It was great. I loved yeah. it. It was, me, it was me and all the other losers who were there. <laughs> it was like, but you would love it though because it was only like five other people in the theater. There was like nobody there. It was great. Yeah. It was yeah, perfect. I don't mind going to the movies by myself. I've done that. But some people are really weird about seeing a movie by themselves. They they feel awkward like I feel awkward going out to dinner by them myself. Right. They feel like a loser, I guess. Well, <laughs> I, let's face it. I don't like to leave the house in general. So <laughs> I need to find some place that delivers waffles to me. So that might be what I do. I'm pretty sure you can get any, almost anything delivered nowadays with DoorDash. Yeah. Oh, we've got Doug McAdams hungry now. We just talked <laughs> about pancakes and bacon, so you're not on that much of a delay. Pre-show biz on me, Doug. I do love French toast. Oh, French toast, yeah. My mom never really made waffles or pancakes growing up, but she always made French toast. Yeah. I love French toast. Um, Let's see. Wait. Uh, you got okay. this for dinner while reading a Scarlet Witch book. Oh, and Dark Knight's Death Metal, uh, I did get that. I ordered it from Big Bad Toy Store um, with the colored vinyl. I still need to listen to my metal picture disc. Oh, that's what you were asking. Yeah, I did, uh, Alexandre, Alexander. I ordered, I pre-ordered it. They have it on BBTS. Yes, yeah, BBTS has vinyl. Huh, yeah, I didn't know that. I think that's where I got my metal vinyl. Uh, have you read Huck Taylor by Mark Millar? I haven't. I think you told me to watch it. I mean, you told me to read it, didn't you? You said it's yeah. really good. It's a, it is good. It is really good. I it's one of the gentler, more interesting stories from Mark Millar. It's really sweet and uh, nice and fun. It's very interesting. I liked it a lot. It's one of it's. I think it's one of his more accessible, interesting books. I'm someone who's rare that I never read a book by Mark Miller that I hated, but I think I've avoided a lot of the ones that are controversial. Like oh. I've read, his, I've read his Wolverine, I've read his Authority, I read The Magic Order, I read Red Sun. So I feel like those are all of his biggest hits. Yeah, I like. I loved Magic Order. I wanted. I'm sorry that that's not going to be a TV show now. Oh, is it not? I thought it would be on no, Netflix. It got canceled. I hate that. I think it was so close to being made, and it just, I think during the pandemic, it got canceled. Well, Jupiter's Legacy's out. Yeah, I haven't movie. watched that yet. I haven't read the comic yet. Oh, I love that's another good comic. I like his comic. And Frank Quietly, uh, Frank Quietly does. Does he do Circle or Legacy? Mm, I, I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to go look. I haven't Isn't read Jupiter before. Circle like the older one and then the legacy is the follow-up characters? Okay, now you're making me have to go get it. <laughs> well, Mr. Awesome kind of fills us in a little about Superman. He says that Dad Superman, so Clark, is will be in action while John Superman will be in the Superman title. Interesting. I still need to read the Bendis stuff. I read the first couple trades of the Bendis stuff, but I need to read the rest of them. I'm pretty sure Jess read a decent amount of them a couple months back. Um, yeah, I read all of Bendis's action, and now I need to read Bendis's Superman. I um, I really enjoy what I what I read so far. Jess and I are one of those rare people who actually like Bendis and what he writes. Yeah, for the most part. So I don't have a problem with Superman so far. Yeah, let's see. Jupiter Circle. Jupiter. Wait a minute. What? Uh, hmm. I'm hard. Based on their publishing, they these were published in similar years. So, 
2017 for Jupiter's Legacy Book 2, 2015, first printing, first printing to the... Hmm. This says first printing for both of these, Jupiter's Legacy and Jupiter's Circle for 2015. Maybe they came out in floppy form earlier. Did someone in the chat illuminate us about Jupiter's Legacy and Circle and which one came first? Yeah. I think Jupiter's Legacy is about like their kids or something, right? Or their yeah, so I think Jupiter's Circle came out first because Jupiter's Legacy is about their kids. So Jupiter's right. came out first. I'm saying it. <laughs> and, hi and highlighters uh, highlighting our sponsor for today's episode, Denny's. <laughs> At least for breakfast all day. I'm not a big Denny's guy. We have a local chain in Pittsburgh called Eaton Park. That we that's kind of like our local chain to the Denny's. We do have Denny's, but not a lot of people like it as much as Eaton Park. Ugh, black pudding, gross me <laughs> at the door. Square <laughs> sausage. <laughs> well, someone mentioned earlier about dark chocolate Oreos. I don't like dark chocolate, so I'm no chocolate all the way. Oh, I missed dark chocolate Oreo question. Here's a a, a good question for us. What is your, from Sergio, what is your favorite Justice League run? Do you recommend the Jeff Johns one? I love, I personally love the Jeff Johns New 52 run. All of it. All I of love it. the end, especially the Dark Side War. That was great. Yeah. I, I know it's not exactly a Justice League run, but I really love that world, I'm um, sorry, World's Greatest Superheroes by Paul Dini, that absolute by him and Alex Ross. I think that's that's like the that should be like the first absolute that anyone gets in their collection, because yeah. it explains all the characters, gives you awesome backstories, great one shot stories that highlight what's so special about Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and all the rest. I think it's just a great entry point for anyone who doesn't know a lot about DC. So I recommend. I think it might be out of print though. I'm not sure if it's still in print or not. Already, I think it. I think you got a reprint, and you're so you're saying. Wait a minute, let me. It might be out of print. I heard I heard someone talking about it, but I think they have a deluxe still. But if you can get Alex Ross's art in oversized absolute form, you have to. World, wait. Let me see if this works. Whoop. World's greatest superheroes. And Mister Awesome, you're right. Eden Park is home of the famous Smiley Cookie, which I just had a couple of days ago. It's out of print. That's too bad. Ugh. I hope they bring it back in print for people. That's a great book. The Smiley Cookie. So is Mr. Awesome also from where? Pennsylvania or Pittsburgh? I think, he's, I think he is from around here. Um, yeah, it looks like it is out of print. Uh, the, hard, hmm, the hardcover... Oh, that blows. That should always be in print. Absolute or deluxe. Is the deluxe out of print too? <clears throat> All it says on Amazon is that um, uh, your only choices are from third-party sellers. Oh, that sucks. And DC is not good at reprinting stuff either. Um, mm, they, they have been good about absolutes. And reprinting them as deluxes, at least that gets the book into people's hands. Uh, smiley cookie. The trade is oversized. Uh, and Mr. Awesome lives just north of Cranberry. All right. Burn Cranberry? No, it's like 30, 40 minutes away from me. Oh, okay. <laughs> they're, great. <laughs> they're great at publishing in a bunch of different formats that's for sure you're right ah there's farhan how's it going buddy peace and love from malaysia nice and farhan's like always here now yeah it's great always good to see farhan is it like 5 a.m where he is i think uh he says sunday morning there oh and sergio won it on ebay the got, um, world's greatest heroes. I got that absolute last year, so I'm glad I got that when I did. 
that's that that's definitely my favorite Justice League book by far. I love that book. Mm-hmm. And the Justice League story at the end, it's not a traditional Justice League story. There's not even much action. It's not like there's like a villain that they punch, but it's such an interesting story and kind of talking about the Justice League's responsibility to the world and how they can't just do whatever they want, like the authority love to do in their books. They have to be ans- they have to, they have to answer to the United Nations. They have to answer to the governments of the world. They have to be responsible. That was a really interesting story. Uh, Farhan said it's 7 a.m. there. Nice. So That's you would say... Awesome. Sorry? I also want to put in a plug for the book Justice by Paul Kruger, Paul Kruger and Alex Ross. That's one of my favorite books of all time. That's a great Justice League book. Isn't it Jim Kruger? What I say, Paul? Yeah. I think that guy's a scientist. Jim Kruger. <laughs> That's also a great story as well. Yeah. So is Jim Justice Kruger. your favorite Justice League story? I beg your pardon? So Justice would be your favorite Justice League story. Yeah. It's one of my all-time favorite books. I like it um even better or not better but i i love kingdom come but i totally love justice here's a good question because we actually reviewed this book from jake our thoughts on batman universe by bendis i loved it i thought it was one of bendis's best books ever he writes a if you're if you're okay with a little bit lighter chatty batman <laughs> That lighter hearted version of Batman that talks uh, instead of grim and gritty and doesn't love pie. Um, I, I enjoyed that a, a heck of a lot. I enjoyed it immensely. That Nick Darrington art is also fantastic. Oh, uh, but deluxe size Batman volume sell out so quickly. Tales of the Demon was gone almost instantly, says Michael. Um, yeah, I remember that Tales of the Demon went out of print quickly. Same with uh, Gotham by Gaslight. That sold out in a couple of days. That was crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, New Frontier is a Justice League. Well, it's kind of a Justice Society story. I wouldn't uh, say it's Justice Society because all the characters who are in it are from the Justice League. Oh, yeah. and But it's set in the 40s. In the 40s. Because Justice Society would be like Dr. Fate. It would oh, be Alan yeah, Scott. And a Green Lantern. So right. yeah, it is Justice League. It, and it's a great Justice League story. And a, one of the few DC uh, movies that I've seen, animated movies. Well, that was a great one. Because Darwin Cook was really uh, involved in that movie. It wasn't just that they just copied his style. He was really involved in the process of it. Which is probably why it was so good. Um, Justice by Kruger and Ross Awesome Read it this year based on the review Jess gave it Thank you That it is one of his favorite stories of all time Well that's great Those are like the best things you can tell somebody Is that they They helped you uh, Pick a book that you enjoyed That is the best thing ever Um, Let's see And And Man 40 who's Quick to uh, know the difference on things says Tales of the Demon or Demon Trilogy because Tales of the Demon. Wait a minute, Tales of the Demon is old. I have a copy of that, that's way old. Maybe it's Demon Trilogy he was talking about. MN40 has. Lots of comic knowledge in his noggin. And comic arranging knowledge, too. <laughs> That's right. Unfortunately, I'm on my last cube on the Kalax. Well, imagine where you would have been without him, though. I know. You'd be spilling out of the bat cave. <laughs> I know. I am spilling now. I it's I'm gonna have I don't know what to do. I just got a huge order from DCBS. I did get all new Wolverine today, so mine's almost here. Mine's in Pittsburgh, but it's not in my house yet. Mm. I can't. That's going to be. I'm re. I'm reading the X twenty three stuff right now, so oh. I'm, getting, I'm getting ready for all new Wolverine. Because I read the first half like on Hoopla, and then I just, I said I'll wait for it to come out in collected edition because I don't want to get the trades. Because I'm like I know 
it's going to get a hardcover line or an omnibus. So I'm really excited to finally finish it out. That'll be that's going to be great for you to read. Demon Trilogy, Trilogy is the unusual sized book, right? Uh, I have wait, I don't have Demon Trilogy because I have the original books, so I don't know the answer to that question. I do know the answer to this question, and I know exactly what we're both going to say. I would say here. I was going to say this later anyway. Secret Identity by Busiek is my favorite Superman book ever, but Jeff Johns is my favorite Superman writer overall. If that makes sense. He pick a book. I just said it. I said Se Superman Secret Identity is my favorite Superman book. Oh, all right. But I'm saying my favorite Superman writer is Jeff Johns because of all the books we're going to talk about in a couple minutes. So you're saying not Secret Origins, but Secret Identity. Yeah, I was say Secret Identity is my favorite Superman book. Yeah, same with me. I, I actually, agree. I I actually agree thought that. you were going to say Secret Origins. No, because I think Secret Identity has such a special place in my heart because that really kind of kicked off my love for Superman. Because um, I liked I liked Superman. I used to watch this animated series when I was younger. I used to read some books. But I feel like that was the one that really solidified him as one of my top favorite superheroes. Mm. Yeah, and it's very different. It's a very different... Uh... It's not the best book for a newbie to read. No. It's better, I would say Secret Origin is a great place to start if you're a newbie. Or Birthright. I, I agree. Both of those, right, I agree. And, Secret Identity means a lot more if you have a decent knowledge of Superman. Yeah. And hopefully you get a chance to watch Superman and Lois, because that is a great show. Well, yeah, I do want to watch that, but I'm watching Snyder Cut first. It's on HBO Max, too. They put I, it on HBO Max now. Superman and Lois? Yeah. Let me see if the most recent episodes. I haven't watched the most recent one because it was on a hiatus for a couple of months. Mm. Let's see if the most recent one is up. I'm not sure if the newest one is up, but I can watch it on on, on cable. Okay. Scream and Fingers says John Superman or Tomasi Superman? I would say Jeff John Superman. I'm They're both fantastic, but. Yeah, they both are great. I'm going to say Tomasi. I think this John stuff is a little more consistent for me. I love the Tomasi stuff, but there were some arcs where I was like, that was fine, or that was good. Uh huh. There were a lot of arcs that were fantastic, but there were some that were kind of, that was just okay. Wait, what leaves in two days? Superman and Lois? Uh, this, is, this is why the chat is in so valuable, because I... I don't know when things are leaving HBO. Are you talking, uh, Andrew? Are you talking about Superman and Lois or Justice League? Do you have like on demand or Xfinity or anything? Like, what do you have for your cable provider? <laughs> yes, doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> he I is talking about that. Uh, is is it Superman and Lois or Justice League? You're saying is leaving in two days. Say Superman and Lois or Justice League. I guess we'll find out. Superman and Lois will be gone in two days. Ah, uh, thank you, Andrew. Okay, well, that means I have to watch it before I watch Justice League. You can also, like, set to record at your house, too, with the new episodes. Well, that's true. That way you can catch up with that. That's true. And man 40 is talking about rearranging his collection. That's the problem. Once you finally get everything fitted and then nice, then you get then you have new orders coming in. <laughs> so that's the ongoing problem. Yeah, my Kalax used to be so beautiful. It was nothing <laughs> but Marvel omnibus. Everything matched with the red top. There were no anything else in it, and I ran out of space. And now there's trades and hardcovers and. <sighs> complete collections and uh, I just loved the old days when it was nothing but Marvel Omnis and there was a bunch of whales in there too. Now there's hardly any whales left. Yeah, well, especially with Marvel reprinting everything, there's not as many Marvel whales as there used to be, which is a good thing for most. Well, Jess isn't really happy for other people, so I don't think he thinks it's a good thing. What's the matter? I don't, what? <laughs> Remember you were getting mad because 
different rare books that you had were getting reprinted. You were getting mad, like Usagi Yojimbo and oh, the, that naughty, naughty or nice or whatever, naughty and nice is getting uh, reprinted. That really pisses me off. <laughs> I don't own. I guess there's no such thing as an out of print book now because. But this is a good thing, Jess. Other people get to enjoy it. I fuck other people, man. I I no. Oh, you and Tyler call me dark. Sorry, I, I try not to <laughs> swear around you. Uh, what well, you just got to see the real me. Sorry, <laughs> I try to present a different me to you. But you have to be excited for some people, like your friends, who get to enjoy some of these books. No, no, I'm not excited at all. I'm angry. I don't want anybody to enjoy anything. <laughs> so why did you say you were excited for me to get all new Wolverine in? Did you just say that for no reason? That you didn't mean it? Oh, it's in print and you can get it. And I love that book and you're my friend. So yeah, but you're not going to buy Naughty and Nice. So that doesn't help. I mean, you don't know that. I do know. <laughs> that. Maybe Tyler will buy it. <laughs> no, I don't think he's going to get it. Tyler doesn't, Tyler doesn't read anything over PG. So I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. And he doesn't, he doesn't uh, watch anything uh, that's, um, well, he doesn't watch or read anything that's scary or gory. He does not. Well, yeah, DC whales are probably more common than Marvel whales nowadays. <laughs> I know. Sorry, Rich. I thought I was on with Omar for a second, and <laughs> I let my yeah. real personality slip out. This isn't this isn't after dark with drunk Omar. <laughs> I know. Sorry. I apologize to the audience and everyone out there. I shouldn't have said that. I never heard that word before tonight. I know. Well, you never heard it out of me because <laughs> I try and watch it around you. I've heard it on Omni Bros. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that word said more than the <laughs> Omni Bros. Um, have you guys got any hot takes or thoughts on DC's plans for the next Superman film? Uh, for instance, Black Soups. I, I only know a little bit about that, so I don't. I don't have a Hosky Coates is writing a Superman. I think it's going to be, people keep saying it's Michael B. Jordan, but I don't know if that's finalized or not, but it's going to be an African American Superman. So I'm not really know a lot of details about it. Um, I think people are upset because they want Henry Cavill to be Superman. They want him to have more Superman movies, but I think this is the thing about the DC movies that they're more, it's more of like a multiverse. They're doing a bunch of random stuff that aren't really connected anymore. Unlike the MCU. Is this so, the Superman from Earth 23 where he's the president? I think it's going to be like, yeah, from like the multiversity stuff. I think it's going to be that Superman. Well, I, I think that guy was great. So I don't actually, if it's true and it actually happens, I, I just want a good movie. So if that's true, it doesn't bother me. IQ has the best comment of the night. Let's just judge movies when, they, when they're out. That's yeah. kind of how I feel. I mean, I can give you my thoughts if I'm excited or not excited for things, but I'm almost always going to see every superhero movie besides Venom. Uh, and I can't wait to see Venom Carnage. Um, that, that trailer did not excite me. <laughs> <laughs> it just, that, that, that franchise just strikes me that it came out in 2004. It doesn't seem like a 2021 movie, but apparently that's the, that's the charm for some people. And I'm glad people like it. Um, okay. So no, it's Clark Kent. Uh, uh, so I have no idea. Well, the only part of me that doesn't like that is I do like Henry Cav Cavill as Superman, and I do want more Henry Cavill as Superman. If they can keep doing, I don't know, gosh, I, I don't know uh, if they can keep doing both. I don't, I, I, I don't care, really. It, it sounds, if it's a good movie, then that's okay. Yeah, I just want DC to make good movies. Just yeah. Make good movies. Let's see what's going to happen. I just... I am kind of bummed with the Henry Cavill stuff because we never really got him as like the real Superman. We got him as like the brooding, mopey Superman, and now he finally is starting to turn a corner, and now he's not going to be Superman anymore. So that's that is a bummer. He did look exactly like what I think the character should look like. I think he did a good job. So it is what it is, though. I'm excited for anything that's coming out. I'll give it a shot. Yeah, and Iku's I right. We can't judge it till it comes out. I just want more Henry Cavill stuff. Um. But I, fine, I, I'm fine with it. I don't care. Jess has too much other stuff to watch anyway to even care. I probably won't even get to see it till it comes to cable anyway. And here I am calling it cable. Nobody says that. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
Do you still have to get up to change to change the channel on the knob? <laughs> uh, I did a video the other day with Tyler where it showed the knob changing uh, uh, non-working tube TV that's in the back cave that I found on the side of the road. Uh, that's so beautiful. Yeah, back when you were a kid, you were the remote. I was, yeah. <laughs> and for the three channels we had. Yeah, I saw someone post a meme saying, kids today have never seen a VHS tape or don't know what a VCR even is, and it made me feel so old. Uh, yeah, that I get. Well, if there can be a Miles Morales Spider-Man and a Tom Holland Spider-Man, but they are saying it's both Clark I'm still on that. They're saying it's both Clark Kent, so... Uh, I don't know. Um, oh, yeah, I remember the remote with the wire. The, uh, that, my first VCR, I think, had a, rem a remote with the wire. Remember they have the rewind machine that you put in the machine oh, yeah, after yeah, yeah. you were done with the movie? <laughs> yeah, because they charge you for if you didn't rewind the movie. Right, and you had to take it back to the video store. I, I, rem I miss going. In, in my area, our main grocery store is called Giant Eagle. And they used to have what's called Eagle Video. It was kind of like our version of Blockbuster. And that was that was every Friday night for me. I used to love going there and renting movies. And the kids never are gonna have that nowadays. It's just you can watch anything you want whenever you want. They're not gonna appreciate it like we did. Well, I don't wanna lump myself in with you because you didn't have video stores either when you were growing up. No. I, I specifically Oh, I need to buy something online. <laughs> <laughs> I need to sign in right now. Um, is this for uh, for toys no, or statues? It's not for sideshow. It's something else. Um, secret, super secret project that Jess is working on. Right. Um, is this is this dolls? Is this toy dolls? <laughs> like your clothes? No, I'll tell you in a second. I'm gonna see if I can sign in. Oh, Carly Wasserman, that's a great point. Kids these days won't understand the pain of debating what to erase when you didn't have a new, HV new VHS tape. I remember back in the day recording movies on TBS and TNT and having that remote ready to go for when commercials came on so you could hit the record button so it would stop recording and then you'd wait for the commercials to be over and hit record again. But you'd always catch a little bit of the commercial. you always cut off a little bit of the next scene starting. So right. kids, will never, kids will never know that pain. That is for sure. <laughs> yeah, Jess, Screaming Fingers is laughing that you didn't have a colored TV, but I remember you saying you didn't because you didn't know that The Wizard of Oz had color in it, right? No, we didn't have a color TV till I was probably 10 because I remember kids in the cafeteria when I was like in fourth grade talking about um, how the colors changed when she went to Oz. And I was like, no, they didn't. <laughs> like, <laughs> what are you talking about? about? Yes, they did. And, and I went home and realized that we didn't have color tv you were like luke and empire strikes back that's impossible <laughs> no, no it's not true <laughs> ox me pete are you swiping another figure from tyler <laughs> this is the perfect time to snipe something from tyler because he's on vacation so he's not as up to date on stuff as he usually would be yeah um no i'm getting a comic book that i want you did get the modok much much earlier than him I did. I don't, his, I don't think his is even shipped yet. I know he was bummed out. Did you open the Modoc yet? No, I haven't opened anything from that toy haul. I'm excited for the Modoc TV show that comes out next week. I still haven't seen <laughs> Falcon and Winter Soldier. That <laughs> suck. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, or thinking you recorded something only to find the little tab was missing. Oh, that oh, was yeah. really annoying. Having to get the labels to put on the front of the tape or the side of the tape and write on what it is. Yeah. Kids have no idea nowadays. They can my, my son can literally watch anything he wants to watch. Yeah. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. Okay. But well, pretty much streaming nowadays, I mean, there's so many streaming services though. It's impossible to have them all. Someone just said we've pretty much replaced cable with a cable substitute, which is a streaming service. <laughs> like to buy all the streaming services is pretty much what cable costs. Yeah, I know. That's not it, the the uh, all the streaming services is, is. Yeah, you're right. It's exactly what um, the um, the main service 
was like uh, direct tv i have the package and i have it's more expensive because i have direct tv and the streaming services i haven't cut the cord at all i got more cords oh yeah you know was the worst though just trying to set up a recording on a vhs tape for like later that day that was always really annoying <laughs> oh yeah that was, <laughs> trying sure was trying to make sure everything was right yeah you could definitely make a huge mistake there i definitely yeah. accidentally recorded wrong things all the time Iku says streaming makes it utter trash for people outside the U.S. Huh? I never. Yeah, I think HBO Max is pretty. I don't think people outside of America can get HBO, HBO Max. Yeah, I. That's one thing that really bothers Iku. I well, know I mean, it's, just, it's just hard in general for like I don't think it's it's harder for people internationally to use services like in stock trades or cheap graphic novels, right? Because the shipping is that much more expensive. Yeah, there's not a good international option. Uh, this is interesting. I watch more YouTube than shows. It's free. I just watched something on YouTube, uh, because that's the only place I could find it. Uh, it was a documentary on Ginger Baker, the drummer, uh, beware of Mr. Baker. I couldn't find it anywhere. And I found it on YouTube and I, I watched it and it had been years since that thing had been made and I've been dying to see it. So I finally watched it on YouTube. Um, and it was great. Well, that sucks, Hayden. Hayden says, we're not getting HBO Max in the UK until 2025 at the earliest. Yikes. Mm, that does blow. I really like HBO Max, too. I think it might be my favorite streaming service right now. It's got a lot of stuff that I like, which is uh, stuff that I've just gotten into, like the DC Animated Universe. Right. And, and for this year, getting movies as they come out in theaters. Like, I just watched a movie last night, We, Kate and I did, that came out in theaters that night, and we had to go to the theaters and, and get tickets or anything. It was great. I think The Conjuring comes out in the first week in June. I'm definitely watching that. Conjuring number six or whatever it was, but it's, uh, it's it, very appealing to me. And you'll be excited to watch The Suicide Squad when it comes out on HBO Max, too. Is that coming out this year? Yeah, this summer. Suicide Squad is? Yeah. Well, woohoo! I'm way yeah. happy for that. I, I didn't... You don't have to go to the theater, Jess. You can see it on HBO Max. Oh, well, you know that I am absolutely happy about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you even watched the trailer for that yet, did you? I haven't. I don't usually watch trailers. Yeah, that's a good idea. I wish I had that strength. I always want to see what's going on. Taping a program only to have it interrupted by breaking news. <laughs> I remember specifically the the uh, last episode of MASH, which was at the time the most watched regular TV episode in history. I was all set to tape it and the power went out. <laughs> it was warm. This was in Carmel in California. And I, I, the power went out. Well, no, I wasn't going to tape it. I was going to watch it. And fortunately, my father, who uh, was a uh, radio, uh, had a radio show at uh, the local radio station, one of his uh, uh, technicians or something had recorded it. And fortunately, I had uh, I got to see it. But I mean, everybody back in back then in nineteen. 83 i guess maybe i mean they were dying everybody was dying to see the final episode of mash it was a huge deal yeah if you missed it you're out of luck yeah. <laughs> till i don't yeah till reruns or something well that's like my parents talking about back in the day people would like go to people's houses to go watch the wizard of oz when it aired once a year like the whole neighborhood would come together and watch it at one person's house basically it aired once a year. And that's how I found out I did not, I wasn't a cool kid. We had that. <laughs> oh, Christian remembers it. Yeah. I've never seen MASH before. Oh, you haven't? No. Uh, I've seen the movie or the TV show. Oh, my gosh. I, I'm surprised you haven't seen the movie. You're such a 70s movie buff. Yeah, I don't know why I never saw it. Wait, who's in that again? Is it Elliot Gould's in it? Yeah, Elliot Gould and um, uh, um, 
the the, uh, the <laughs> I'm blanking on it. His um, I can see his face. Um, I well, saw the uh, huh Donald Sutherland. Donald Sutherland. Yeah, I saw him at a at a Giants a San Francisco Giants game one time, and it was kind of hot, and he had on a white fancy hat and a white suit with white tie and a colored shirt and this giant camera that he was taking pictures of Candlestick Park, which was the coldest stadium in history. I do need to watch that. Oh, it's I need to check out the show. I did watch an Elliot Gould movie recently that I didn't enjoy that a lot of people hyped up for me. Oh, what was that? Uh, the Long Goodbye. It was uh, directed by Robert Altman, and it was like a loose adaptation of the Raymond Chandler novel. It was set in the 70s. Was it any good? I just didn't enjoy it. I just didn't get the hype. It's considered one of the best like noir, like neo noir movies of all time. And I just didn't like it at all. I think I saw it, and I don't think I remember liking it. I think it's I, actually, I'll, I'll put it this way it's very divisive. People who are like Raymond Chandler purists who love the novels aren't a huge fan of it because it's set in the 70s, and it's very much different. Than the original novel, but people who love 70s cinema are really into it. I just couldn't get into it myself. But I did love the taking of Pelham 1, 2, 3, the original. That has one of the best endings I've ever seen in a movie, ever. Awesome ending. It's on HBO Max. Everyone go check it out. Yeah. Movie. I remember seeing it when it came out. Can yeah, Candlestick at Night was ridiculous. This is a ballpark that was built on, like landfill that stuck out into the bay in the not into the yeah into the bay in san francisco and the winds would come whipping in there at night and it would get wind chill would get like into the 30s and it was blowing and you'd be freezing and they had a special button they'd give you if you stayed at a night game that went into uh um that went into extra innings. They called it the Croix de Candlestick. It was a special cross, like a thing they give you in the French Foreign Legion because <laughs> it was such a brutal experience. Well, we're an hour in, Jess. Should we get to the topic? <laughs> I think somebody, yeah, Sergio is saying, how do you collect Superman by Jeff Johns? He's probably ready for the topic. Well, I need to go get some more water, so why don't you answer a few more questions, and I'll be right back. Okay. Um, Jess, did you watch Trapper John TV show with Parnell Roberts? Um, I watched a couple episodes and I, it wasn't for me. And I remember after mash, it only lasted about, it was super hyped, Mr. Awesome. And it was super hyped and it crashed and burned. It just wasn't funny. It was a lecture, like all of mash that was directed by Alan Alda, which is when, when, uh, Winchester came on, Alan Alda started to write and direct, and all the MASH episodes became a lecture. There was nothing funny about them. And in the end, Kr Klinger started dressing up in a uniform. What's funny about that? Uh, uh, Alan Alda ruined that. He ruined it, I tell you. Uh, Invincible, I... I think it's going to be great. I've read the first three before. I'm rereading it, trying to read all of it. Um, I, I've really enjoyed what I've read so far, and I want to read all of it so I can watch the uh, animated series, which is supposed to be so great. I know what the first t couple of twists are, so but I don't want to know what any more of the twists are by watching the uh, animated series. So... Uh, I, that's a goal of mine is to read all of Invincible this year. I encourage you to read it. Yeah, the show did go on too long, Mr. Awesome. It, it was, it was really funny until Frank Burns left. It was still funny when, um, Colonel Potter got there. He was still funny and there was, there, I mean, I get it. It was war. So there were lessons to be learned, but then when, uh, Frank Burns left and Winchester came on and Alan Alda started directing it. It was painful. Every show was a lecture. Gosh, it was so, those first episodes were so funny. And then Alan Alda ruined it. 
All I know is the ending of MASH, the final, the final shot, and the helicopter and the waving. Isn't that what it is? Uh, yeah. You mean the, fi the final show? Yeah, the fi is that, is that, it's not the final scene or something, or the final shot of the show? I actually don't even remember. I, I, it was 1983 when I saw it. <laughs> what was the show where it ended where the whole show was a dream in the character's mind? Oh, that was the... What was uh, that guy... What's his name? The, uh, Don, uh, I mean, the uh, Don, uh, Bob Newhart show. So did you watch oh, that? Uh, yeah, he woke up next to Suzanne Plachette, which was a play on Dallas that w Bobby was dead for a year. And she woke up and he had come back because his career had tanked. And it turned out to be a dream that Bobby was dead. Um, How did you feel Dallas when you watched that? Sorry? How did you feel when you watched that on air? I thought it was hilarious because they were playing off on the fact it was, wait, it was like the Bob Newhart show and then it was called Newhart. And it was extremely funny. But uh, And then when he woke up and <laughs> Suzanne Plachette was next to him from the first Newhart show, I thought that was amazingly creative. I thought it was just amazing. I loved it. I thought it was so great. Were you one of those people who was asking the question of who shot Jr.? I didn't actually. I didn't watch Dallas, but lots of people did wonder who shot Jr. I just remember I had a crush on Bing Crosby's daughter in the show. She was my age, and Bing Crosby dumped his old family to marry a younger woman. And had a second family and ignored the first family. <laughs> and his daughter was smoking hot. <laughs> All right. Time for the topic, everybody. All right. <laughs> so, Jess, mark it 106.46 for. 106.46. Okay, wait. The rest of the people who want to watch this after the fact, who don't want to listen to us ramble on about the Bob Newhart show in Dallas, and <laughs> they don't care about who shot JR because we know who shot JR 40, uh, 40 years later. So I think St. Elsewhere was the one that ended in the snow globe, didn't it? Wait, there's. Well, Denise Crosby's his niece. I'm talking about Mary something Crosby. His daughter, Denise Crosby, was the one on Star Trek. Uh, St. Elsewhere, I think, is the one that ended up in the snow globe from that. Uh, that's the one. Newhart, he woke up next to Suzanne Plachette. OK, sorry. It really starts at 107. <laughs> People are like, what are they talking about? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. All right. So we're talking about Jeff Johns. Uh, work on Superman. It's not really a run. It's a bunch of different books that he's written throughout the years. Uh, there's some titles he wrote for action. There's some that he wrote in um, other runs as well. So they're kind of all over the place. And I, we both didn't read New Krypton for this. I know you read New Krypton, but we didn't read it for this show. Because I think Jeff Johns only wrote a little bit of it, correct? Yeah. He, he didn't have a lot to do with it. I think James Robinson wrote a decent part of it, right? Yeah. Did you read the whole thing before? Um, I've read a good chunk of it, but not all of it. But I have all of it now, and so I can read it. What are your thoughts on New Krypton? Sorry? What are your thoughts on New Krypton? Uh, I, I, li I have really liked what I've read, but I haven't finished it. But I've really liked what I've read. I think it's an interesting concept. And I appreciate things like that because Superman could get really stale. So they've constantly got to mess with him. They've got to depower him or get a, uh, you know, they depowered him after Infinite Crisis, which was in one of our books. Um, I can't remember which one. Oh, probably Up, Up and Away. Um, so, uh, you know, they've really got to mess with him a lot because if they kept him, you know, like he was, uh, it wouldn't be interesting. And I think the first messing with him was was that Kryptonite Nevermore series where um, uh, the, ex um, the explosion, I think there's an explosion at Star Labs that destroys Kryptonite, makes it inert on the globe and creates that sand creature doppelganger of them 
And as the famous Neil Adams cover in the Kurt Swan, Murphy Anderson art that's so brilliant, I think that was the first one where they messed with Superman. They depowered him a little bit in that arc. Uh, Dennis O'Neill wrote it. And I think you have to, as as uh, Jeff Johns shows in all these books, you have to create interesting foes for him or interesting new settings like New Krypton to keep him from going stale. Right. And I want to read New Krypton, but man, that series is hard to collect now. <laughs> There's like so many volumes and they're all out of print. There's yeah. Many. So I don't know if I want to deal with that headache. That's a lot of work. If they were smart, that'd be <laughs> that'd be two or three omnis. If they were smart, yeah. <laughs> DC, I don't want to use the word smart around them. Well, they there's there is simply not enough Superman omnis. They're I mean they're doing a good job with Batman omnis. Um, there could be more Batman omnis, but I'd like to see more Superman omnis. Um, I. Uh, I, I liked a lot what I read of New Krypton because I thought it was a really interesting setting and story for him. I, li I liked Up, Up, and Away because it showed him a as a human with still uh, the same um, the same characteristics he had as Superman, wanting to help people even though he was depowered for, for much of it. Um, and he had, he had a ring that would call like the JLA uh, and uh, Supergirl wasn't depowered. Um, but I, what I liked about it a lot was um, that he was, he was human, but he still wanted to help and was still risking his life to write the, the good newspaper story that would that would um, um, bring down the bad guys. And I was, love seeing Clark Kent as the as a newspaper reporter. Yeah, and I love how he was like Perry's golden child in this in the first part of the series, where he's like, "Man, you've really come into your own. You're really doing a great job." But to sacrifice by becoming Superman again and having those powers, he has to not be as good a reporter as he is without his powers. So that's a really interesting conundrum. What we just got, a, I think, a really good compliment from Joe Chip. NMC is live, but I chose Jess and Taylor over Omar. Joe Chip, just go over to that stream real quick and say, hey now, and then leave. <laughs> Jess <laughs> says, hey now, and then come right back. <laughs> he knows I have a show at seven, that rat bastard. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but that whole uh, conundrum that he has with doing the news reporting stuff reminded me a lot of Peter Parker. Like he can't okay, be, yeah. he can't be the best friend. He can't be the best photographer. He can't be the best scientist. He could be because he's a sacrifice for being Spider-Man. And the same way Clark Kent could be the second best reporter in the world. Lois Lane will always be the best reporter no matter yeah. how much time Clark puts into it. He could be the second best, but he never will be because he has to be Superman. And so he can't put in the time that's required. So he 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 gets beaten up a lot by uh, uh, gangs that want him to stop reporting. Uh, Luther is uh, up to um, you know extreme no good as he usually is. Um, <laughs> I loved this scene where um, wait, what's his name? Um, <laughs> not the. Is it the Toy Master or wait, what's the little doll guy? Doll Toy wait, Man. That's Toy Man? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love where they're operating on Metallo. And Toy Man makes it to look like an operation <laughs> game. I thought Toy that Man was, was really creepy in this book. Oh yeah. He was. I love Toy Man in the animated series, Jess. I'm excited for you to watch that show in 2026. I can't wait. <laughs> I just <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, and then he gets his powers back to a certain extent and gets ganged up on by a motley crew of extremely uh, deadly 
villains, Livewire, Riot, Bloodsport, Helgebrook, Grimite, Silver Banshee. I'd like to see more Livewire in current Superman. Because she's I, in the animated series. Oh, she is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I've seen pictures of that. I'd like to see more Livewire currently because they've sort of let her. If she if she's currently appearing in DC Comics, well, of course I wouldn't know because I'm a year behind. I'd like to see her more because I think they could they could make her an interesting uh, character. And as a reminder for people, it wasn't just Jeff Johns wrote this book; it's also Kurt Busiek. So that's yeah. a great that's a great team working together. I really did enjoy Up Up and Away. It was a really good story. Yeah, I did too a lot. And I hadn't hadn't read this in a while, so and that's I, following I, Infinite, Infinite Crisis in Fifty Two, and that's why he's depowered. And so, right. if you read those stories, you'll understand why he's depowered. I don't think you necessarily have to read those stories to understand it, but just know going into it, he's depowered because of those events. Right. That's all you really need to know. And the art's good too. Is that Pete Woods? Pete Woods and somebody else. And so this is out of print, unfortunately. I was able to pick it up at an LCS a couple months ago. So it's not expensive to get, though. You can get it for really good prices. Yeah, I'll tell you what's actually kind of expensive now is Last Sun. Do you mean the original trade or hardcover? I mean both. The Deluxe is still out, though. Um, is it out of print already? Wait a minute. Okay, let me double check. Because this just came out like three months ago, two or three months ago. Uh, Superman Brainiac. The hardcover is third party seller, uh, and the paperback is like 28 bucks. You sent me this for free. Sent you what? Brainiac, which there it is. Okay, the trade. Yeah, so I, think, I think you have it in your custom uh, buy of New Krypton, right? Sorry, don't you have this in your custom buy of New Krypton? I think that's why you sent this to me. Uh, probably. Um, wait a minute. Is that the reason why I sent it to you? I don't know why. I think you probably, had, you probably bought it by accident. I think I just got the hardcover and I probably did double dip. <laughs> You've never done that before. <laughs> uh, well, Superman Brainiac is also good because it's a really, I, Brainiac when I was growing up was just, a green guy. I, I love the circles in his head. They've kept those, which I, I and they they've given him like an alien hive mind type of guys here on the cover. I've always liked this cover because it's like Superman's almost reluctant to touch the creature. This, Gary this, Frank is the best Superman artist, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, Bra this scene doesn't necessarily appear in the book. But their confrontation on his ship, I thought, was really amazing because um, I don't want to. <laughs> his Supergirl is so good examining Cat Grant here. There looks <laughs> to be a little plastic in your. And then Lois goes, OK, come on, lo let's go, Supergirl. <laughs> um there's definitely a big retcon in this book with Brainiac, but it's really interesting. You yeah. realize that – I don't want to spoil it, but you realize that he's never really met the real Brainiac, which is really interesting, which I yeah. never – that was a really interesting concept. I agree, I agree completely because he, the, he, he appears in various guises. This is just one of his guises. Guys. But, uh, yeah, I don't want to ruin the story either, other than to say it's really awesome. Um, and the Gary Frank art is, is great. Um, and I love that S Superman has a foe that is very difficult for him to defeat, even with Supergirl's help. Um, and Lois Lane looks good, and Brainiac looks good. Um, and everybody, I noticed Jeff Johns has Brainiac and General Zod always questioning Superman's dedication to Earth and the inferior beings that they are. Like, why are you wasting your time? Right. I love the ending of this book, too. Oh, A really heartbreaking ending. It is. 
I, for, I, had forgotten, I had forgotten about it and it and it was it was you're right it tugs at your heartstrings um yeah it's i think it's a brilliant piece of writing it's a really real reaction from superman on what happens and i think something we need to be saying about these books is that i don't think you really have to read them in any particular order i think you can read them in any order you want to really they don't really I, connect to each other that much. I'm sure I read them all out of order. I mean, obviously, Secret Origin is the ideal place to start because it's the origin story of Superman. So maybe start there, but the rest you can really read whenever you want to. It's not a continuous run. It's a bunch of different shorter stories that he did throughout the years. So I wouldn't say there's a really hard and fast reading order for this series. I, I agree with that because I know I read them out of order because I read Secret Origin last. <laughs> yeah, so you don't really have to. That makes it a little bit easier, I think. I think it's like whenever we did our metal reading order, people were like, okay, I really want to know exactly what to read, when, like when do I read this issue, when do I read that issue. That gets kind of exhausting for me personally. Well, I'm, happy, see- I'm happy to do that service, but it takes a long time to figure out these reading orders sometimes. Yeah, and that metal uh, video... I think still holds up because people, I still get questions about the metal reading order and you do have to read metal in a certain order um, to understand it or else you're going to get lost. It it won't make any sense. Yeah. Hopefully in June we'll be able to read death metal together and do another one of those videos for death metal, a review and a reading order to help everybody out. I, yeah, that'll be great. And uh, Hayden so did ask me um, on the on the metal video, um, what order should I read the books in? And I said, <laughs> the, this video is about that. Watch the video, please. <laughs> yeah, Taylor put together the reading order. Watch the video. I personally think my reading order was even better than DC's official reading order list because there were some things that were out of order. Right. So, I mean... But dude, it's not as bad. Wanna, as... It's, it's not even fun to make fun of DC anymore because it's too easy. But, <laughs> I mean, I, it's not really surprising that I as a fan could come up with a better reading order than they could. <laughs> it, um, it's not as bad as Spider-Verse. It's oh, much easier to follow. No. that People have to use, like, sticky notes. I the Spider Verse hardcover. It's crazy, but the, uh, in the Spider Verse hardcover, they don't even tell you what each issue is, right? How do no. you figure it out? How do you figure it out then? Um, I think by page number. That's how you you Google the reading order, and they tell you page uh, numbers. That's crazy. Yeah, but Riley said he read it just straight through, and he was fine. So I I read it, uh, um, sticky noted, and. I'm going to try and read it straight through and see which way is the best. The inventor of sticky notes just recently died this week, by the way. R.I.P. R.I.P. How much money did that guy make off of that? Oh you know, interesting. he worked for 3M and he came up with the adhesive. I know this is a tangent, but it's it's interesting. We'll bump up 10 viewers when you talk about it. What's that? We'll bump up 10 viewers when we talk about sticky notes. Don't worry about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, we lose viewers when we talk about <laughs> the subject. That's the problem. When we talk about the subject, we lose viewers. They like the tangents better. Um, he was trying to find um, a super, a, like a super glue, I think for maybe spaceships or, or, or battlecraft or something. And he came up with the adhesive that became another inventors in within 3M he applied it to the sticky notes. So there were two inventors, the guy that came up with the adhesive and the guy that made the sticky notes and 3M let them both patent it and make money. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Maybe I'll finally see some chat money come my way. <laughs> Johnny air windows with the biggest chat we've ever super chat we've ever had. He wants tangents. Have you ever seen that much Nomni bros before? I've never seen that much money ever. Except when you bought your uh, sweater closet. <laughs> yeah, that constructed was quite the pretty penny. And I had to fill it with sweaters. So this will yeah. help you pay for another sweater. <laughs> Johnny, thank you. 
I thank you so much. That's awesome. He likes tangents. Okay, well, there's your tangent that uh, I thought it was awesome that three, because a lot of times you invent something within the company as a scientist and the company is the one that gets the patent and everything uh, and makes money off it. But 3M let both of these guys take out the, uh, the uh, not the trademark, but the patent on both of those products. So I, I think that was cool. You have to watch Curb to get to the episode where him and Jeff want to invest in an inventor who makes the car periscope that you can pull up and see what's going on in traffic in front of you. <laughs> and they're not sure about it. The guy's a really handsome inventor. They meet his wife who's really homely. And Jeff and Larry like do a little uh, talk on the side and they go, I really trust this guy's integrity. No way a guy like that marries a woman like that. <laughs> he, he doesn't have integrity. He can have any woman he wants and he marries her. It's such a great episode. Dudecky agrees, or dude from Kentucky agrees with Johnny. Johnny for the win. Um, I have to see that curve. The curb I really want to see is that Spite Coffee Shop. Well, that's the whole tenth season. That's like the through line. Every single season has a through line story. Yeah, and that's him creating a Spite store to get back at Latte Larry. No, no, you know, at um, Mocha Joe, he's Latte Larry. <laughs> I definitely rewatched that. That was my wife's favorite season, so we need to rewatch that again. Because the 11th season is being filmed right now. Oh, my gosh. I'm so far behind. <laughs> um, here's a Superman question. Justin Taylor, what are your opinions on the new 52 and Rebirth Superman runs? Those are going to be two different opinions on my part. I didn't care for New 52 Superman at all until the very end when Gene Yang started to write it. And when he does. Then they had to kill him <laughs> off. What'd you say? Yeah. yeah, you didn't like him until he died. Yeah, I didn't basically. like him until he died. I'm like, wait, what? I just started to enjoy him. And Gene Yang doesn't even write The Death of Superman or, or uh, Final Days of Superman. That's Peter yeah. Tassi. Right. Um but uh, Rebirth Superman, both runs, we love. I I think I can speak on behalf of Taylor. We did a whole hundred issue episode on Rebirth Superman. That Never was again. <laughs> <laughs> Never. I loved it, but by the end of it, I was like, I don't want to see a red cape for a month. <laughs> we loved Rebirth Superman. Uh, but there's Tomasi's run and the action run. I love the Tomasi stuff the best. But action was good too, right? And action is really you do you really need to read them side by side though. There's a lot going back and forth with the series, especially when they have that one crossover. What is that crossover called, Jess? Uh, the one that Jess forgot. I yeah, because you because you yeah I can't remember what it is because it's really important to understand where that new Clark Kent came from. Oh oh oh, Superman Reborn. Yes, that's what it is. That one's really important. That's a crossover of action and Superman. So you have to read both to understand that. Right. The only New 52 Superman I've read is Superman Unchained, which Jess and I go on record for saying we're one of the few people who actually likes that series. Yeah, I did but like that. New 52 Superman, from what I've heard, I haven't read much of it, is that it really lost sight of who Superman even is. He became a really brash, arrogant, um, hot-headed guy, and that's not who Clark Kent is. I think people miss the classic Superman, which we got back in Rebirth. And seeing him as a father... Is fantastic as a father to a son for someone like me with Bat Sam. That was even better for me. <laughs> with Bat Sam, <laughs> I love it. You've named both me and my son. I'm the Minister of Comics <laughs> and Bat Sam, so you've named both of us. I need to trademark both of those so I can get some money. Now that you're a famous uh, Instagrammer, well, you should give me the. They should give me the trademark, and you can keep the twenty bucks. <laughs> Um, well, there's a lot of talk in the chat about Superman collections and stuff. Um, this is a good insight. Superman and collected editions is a mishmash. It is so confusing and poorly collected. Uh, that is true. It, it's hard to organize. Yeah, there really aren't that many Superman omnis as we talked about earlier. Like, what is there? There's Death and Return of Superman. There's Golden Age Superman. There's Superman in Exile. 
What else even is there? Uh, as far as Superman Omnis? Yeah, now there's Superman by did Tomasi you, coming out. Did you get the new 52 Grant Morrison one? Oh, no, that's not. Yeah, I didn't get that one. You told me not to get it. Yeah, no, don't. I mean, I had to because I'm an idiot, but you shouldn't. There really aren't that many other ones, right? No, uh, I don't. I don't think we can count the golden age ones. I mean, go ahead and count them, but everybody's waiting for this late. I think we're waiting for the late silver age and early bronze age. I thought that was the golden age for Superman. Those that period was amazing. I'd take any Superman Omni at this point. Um, they really do need to do a Jeff John Superman omnibus. That would sell amazingly. But DC hates money, apparently. So We like the two hunky hosts. The tangents are just a bonus. Hayden, you're always such a... You have such a way with words. I appreciate it. <laughs> I've never been described as hunky, so I'll take it. Well, you've been, it's been said you look like Chris O'Donnell several times. Yeah, but... To know if that's a compliment or not, I need to know what era Chris O'Donnell. <laughs> if it's now Chris O'Donnell, that's not a compliment. Oh, has he not aged well? I think he's a little bit overweight. I can't remember. Oh, he's he's in like NCIS Los Angeles or something, right? I think that was a long time ago at this point. I don't think he really does much of anything. Oh, just, oh, that's too bad. Um... Before we go to Superman and the Legion of Superheroes, spoiler alert, I thought it was great. Farhan asks the top three villains of Superman. I'd say Lex Luthor has to be number one. I don't see how you can beat Lex Luthor. I know Jess really loves Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor, so that's probably <laughs> his number one. <laughs> I've been told the director's cut of that movie is amazing though, so I need to see that because you know, I never Don saw Donner cut of Superman too. Yeah, yeah, I was telling you about that. Yeah, I mean okay. Gene Hackman's still in it, so I mean there's gonna be that. They played him as a goofball. I hated that. It was the seventies though. Well, I guess that was pretty pretty hard movies in the seventies though, so maybe that's not a good excuse. That's not a good excuse. They could have made him bald and evil. I also like, don't like Lois Lane in those movies. I don't either. Here's the thing. I think someone mentioned this earlier in the chat. It always bugged me when they draw out how long it takes Lois to, to figure out it's Clark. She is like the smartest woman in the DC universe. She's a really smart Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. She can't figure out it's Clark Kent in glasses. I mean, that's Superman in glasses. Really? It just makes her look really dumb. It really makes her look really dumb. And so that's why I don't like whenever they prolong that too much. That's why I did like Man of Steel where she like knew it was him right away. Yeah, she just discovered it. That was just really refreshing to me. Mm. I don't like where she comes off as like really ditzy and stupid. It wasn't there an era, especially in the Silver Age, Jess, where Lois Lane was just really mean to Clark Kent. Yeah, like, super mean to him. Yeah, like she almost wasn't even a good person, right? Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't know about that. But in Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane, or whatever, they had her going through a bunch of very weird. Um, very odd uh, stories that tried to play into the uh, the politics or the hot topics of the time. And the, <laughs> I, I really should get this issue back in my collection because it's the cringiest cover ever. It's where Lois Lane turns into a black woman. And it says, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's important for me to be black for the next tw 24 hours. And she's going undercover or something to show inner city injustice or, or, or something. And it's just not well handled at all. And it probably had they good intentions, but it just <laughs> didn't come across the right way. Well, that's when it was still a bunch. Uh, well, it still may be a bunch of white pear-shaped guys <laughs> in the <laughs> editor's <laughs> office uh, making these decisions. It it's, may still be that way. There may be a few women. I don't know how many people of color are making any decisions. I doubt very many, but it, it was from a white, uh, older, pear-shaped male's perspective, and it can't be any good when it's like that. It's like I read a news story about how bad it is in the ghetto. Let's make a story 
and have Lois do something about it. Do you remember but, the old uh, SNL sketch where Eddie Murphy goes undercover as a white guy? <laughs> yes. And it turns out like white people are just like they like they mistreat black people whenever they leave. They have parties and things like that, and they they, they he goes to a bank for a loan. And they'll give him any money that he wants. Yeah, he it's, doesn't it's have to so pay for funny. the newspaper or anything. Right, it's, just take it. Just take yeah, it. <laughs> it's free. What? I beg your pardon. But the one black guy besides him is undercover. Leaves the leaves the uh, bus. And they're like he's gone. They turn the music on. They have like a woman <laughs> serving drinks and everything. <laughs> um. <laughs> Like no one at the Daily Planet got bored and doodled glasses on a picture of Superman and thought, wait a minute. Exactly. Yeah, Rich um, says she was kind of a shrew. Um, she, yeah, she was. I just like Lois being really smart, but also really empathetic and kind. I think they yeah. have all three of those things. Right. Um. I think because those book uh, those books were hard to find for a while, and they're just now releasing uh, them. Uh, Farhan, the Burn Superman. It was back in the '90s when it was written, and then it was released in trade paperback. And number four was impossible to find, and so people just didn't collect the trades because they were hard to complete. So um, it was. <clears throat> It was hard for people to get into it. I think now that it's being released in hardcover, maybe more people will talk about it. And Slade Joseph Wilson asks, can you recommend a Superman run that isn't an Elseworld story? All the books we're talking about tonight are not Elseworld stories. These are yeah. all main continuity stories. Yeah. Superman and the Legion of Superheroes. I thought this was great. I also love out of print. Sorry? Also out of print. Well, <laughs> I had to buy this at an LCS as well. Long live the Legion. Superman has to go into the future to save Earth. Well, he he gets hijacked into the future um, by Brainiac 5. He's not supposed to be there, but he ends up staying there. Um, and it's a police state where they ha hate Superman. Um, and it's a, it is gaslighting by the current Justice League who are all Legion, um, rejects who are bitter about being Legion rejects and they start, um, a fan, uh, not a fantasy story, but, uh, they try to make it seem like Superman was an alien well, he was an alien, but and that all aliens are bad in the future third in the thirtieth century or whenever it is, um, and uh, so Superman is there um, under a red sun that has been created. I don't want to say how because it's an awesome reveal how the red sun's been created, uh, and he's depowered, and um, he gets together with all the. Um, Future Legion of Superheroes, which I love. I love Legion of Superheroes. So this was a great book. I thought it was really well written. It's by Gary Gary Frank and Jeff John. So it's Gary Frank art again, which is great. And it's got it has a plot that go who has several twists in it. Um, and I fa I found it to be really well written. Thirty first century. Okay. I found it to be a really interesting, good take on Superman and, and the Legion in the 31st century. And I've never read one page of a Legion of Superheroes book before this, so it was really cool to see these characters in action. I wasn't confused. I wasn't frustrated by it. I think Jeff Johns did a great job introducing these characters, and they all have those little tags that explain their name, their planet of origin, their powers is really, really helpful. Without that, I would have been really confused. I would have no idea what was going on. They've all, yeah, they, they've always done that. Well, I wouldn't know, so it was good for me. Yeah, so I'm just saying, yeah, it's a really good, um, it's a really good thing um, that they've continued because, yeah, there's you know 25 people in the in the Legion, and 
you might ne not necessarily know who Saturn Girl is, so you've, they've always got to they've always got to tag them. I don't think Bouncing Boys in this one was he? No. <laughs> <laughs> and your beloved Pharaoh Lad was not here. No, Pharaoh Lad sadly is still dead. Um, Didn't Glover bring Pharaoh Lad back to life? Should we create a petition? <laughs> um, the two no. characters, the three characters that can never be brought back to life is Uncle Ben, the Waynes, and Pharaoh Lad. <laughs> well, I thought you meant Uncle Ben was the rice, but yeah, Uncle Ben from Spider-Man. Well, he's gone now too, so. Yeah, he is. And you haven't read the Bendis Legion of Superhero stuff, have you? I haven't, and that's what Highlighter's asking. Um, oh, no, that's the Mark Wade. Uh, um, I haven't read the Bendis Legion, and I haven't read... T-Bone sent me the second Legion book by Mark Wade, and I actually already have it. He wrote two volumes of it. Um, and I, uh, it, I'm, it's Mark Wade, so I'm assuming it's good. Mark Wade uh, writing superheroes is just a no-brainer for me to, to buy. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you, yeah, it's good. Um, I, but I already had the second, so I have a second copy um of of volume two now but it was nice of t-bone to send that um but i, I yeah it's wade so it's got to be good he and he loves the legion of superheroes so i just ordered his uh fantastic four omnibus before it went totally out of print today oh good i uh, i sold it on me for a pretty penny and so i had some money on paypal and so i bought it off cgn so i'm excited to get that in and read it because i never read it before Oh, good. I've read. I read it in the three uh, kind of deluxe hardcovers that it was in. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I you'll you'll really enjoy that. That's a good introductory for anybody that's never read Fantastic Four. That Ray, Wade run is a really good um, entrance point, entry point into Fantastic Four. I really want to read the Hickman run. Before they announced the reprints of the Omnis, I they had the complete collections coming out. So the third complete collection just came out. So I need one more left, and I can read that run. So I'm excited to read that run as well. Mm -hmm. I've already I've already come too far with the complete collections. I'm not going to go with the Omnis now. I'm in too deep. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love American Alien Farhan. That's one of my top five favorite Superman books. Yeah, I think same. Very much same. What is that big Legion of Superheroes army that came out last year? That's like massive. Five years later. Have you read that before? Uh, I read about uh, a third of it in floppies. Um, so I, yeah, I, I th that's not a good book for people to start with the Legion of Superheroes. I should probably do a Legion. Of, well, I've done overviews of the Silver Age Legion of Heroes. Um, I should really see what else I can collect of the Legion of Superheroes and do a video on that. So, uh, Jess, in the Silver Age, there, what books were um, Superman and the Legion of Superheroes in together where he was having adventures with them? What title was that in, in the uh, Silver that, Age? It was in Adventure. Adventure Comics. Oh, okay. Is that's, where the Legion was. Okay. So that, that's what the, where their exploits are of a young Clark Kent with the Legion of Superheroes. Okay. Right. Yeah. That appeared in uh, Adventure Comics. Well, tying back to the books we're uh, talking about, that we, we see his first interaction with them in this book on Secret Origin. Right. And for my money, I love Birthright by Mark Wade, but this is my favorite origin story of Superman. I guess there'd be this Birthright and Man of Steel by John Byrne would be some of the options for origin stories for Superman. But this is my favorite. I love this story so much. I I love this story. I always felt like Birthright is the book that should have been turned into a movie. Um, because it is, I, I think it's the most complete and well done uh, Superman book there is. But this book is, is does a good, I'll highlight Taylor as he shows the, um, the art in it, which is Gary Frank art again. And it is, it is just, I mean, I, I don't know how somebody cannot be a Gary Frank 
fan. It's really clean and beautiful and really well done. I will say some of his eye spacing seems odd, like on Lois, um, her eyes are a little too far apart for me, but um, these are characters that look really, um, of course he modeled it on um, uh, what's his name? Christopher from the Reeve. Movie. Christopher Reeves. Is it Christopher Reeves? It's Christopher Reeve. Christopher Reeve. Um, and uh, what they do with Luther, what they do with Superman growing up. Here's a picture. Did you show a picture of the um, the Legion of Superheroes showing up? Not yet, no. Yeah, this is when the Legion of Superheroes shows up. This is in canon already because it all, it's always uh, been, even back in the 60s, when they show up to a young Clark Kent and and say, you're the reason why we exist. Uh, you're going to grow up to be a, a great guy and Superman, and you're going to influence the world all the way into the 31st century. And they take him to the 31st century to show him what he's going to inspire and influence. And it's a great scene and a great little arc part. It's very much inspired by the original Superman, the movie. Jeff Johns is obviously a big lover of that movie, and he was uh, Richard Donner's assistant for a long time. This is definitely paying homage to that story. There's just so many awesome things happening in this book. There's a legion of superheroes. There's I, I really like Parasite. Yeah. His design. He's like a really heavily obese guy. He's just really hungry and wants to eat people. That was really cool. Metallo is really interesting. Lex Luthor's portrayal is amazing, where he has all these flocks of people outside of his building every day, and he's going to make one person's dream come true every single day, which sounds really nice, but he's just trying to breed dependence upon him from everybody in the city. Like he's like their God and they worship him. And I think his portrayal is really interesting in this book. I agree. I, I have not one word of complaint about this book. I think it's the perfect origin story for Superman. You won't hear any complaints from me. I think it's great. I, I love the art. I love everything that's done with the characters. Uh, I, I love the, uh, the uh, awful relationship with Lois and her father and John Corbin uh, being a douchebag and turning into Metallo. Um, I, I love Perry White and the whole Daily Planet office thing with Jimmy Olsen. I don't know. It's great. It's awesome. It's wonderful. Oh, and I, I remember a line from the Legion of Superheroes that I really loved where basically these lead, these, some of these um, heroes in the future think that Superman only cares about superpowered beings. And he's like, no, Superman's for everyone. Yeah. I love that line. No, Superman is for every single person on the planet, not just a select few. I love that line. Because that kind of goes against the whole Frederick Nietzsche, Ubermensch, Superman mentality, which is the strongest is the most important person. The strong people are all that matters. No, Superman's like, no, I'm for everybody. I exist to serve everyone. And so I just love um, their creative duo working together. They are amazing together. I think Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips are my favorite creative duo, followed by Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. And I cannot wait, Jess. Next month, we have Batman Earth, three, Earth 1 Volume 3 coming out. Woo-hoo. That's going to be a day one read for me when that comes in. I love that. I love that series. Um. The, I'm just looking for the the speech you're talking about. Wait, where he... Yeah, I love it. And uh, the army is facing off with Superman, and people are still coming to grips with the fact that he exists. Um, and they're saying, who sent you here? Nobody sent me here. I came here. Why? And he says that... He, I want you to stop looking for a great savior. Lex Luthor isn't it. I'm not it. You are. All of you are. I do what I do because I was given a gift. But all of you were given gifts too. Use them to make each other's lives better. Show the world that Metropolis has a heart. And that is a great sentiment coming from Superman. And before he comes to Metropolis, it's like Gotham City. 
It's crime ridden. Right. It's it's horrible looking. It's decrepit. But him showing up really motivates people to be better, which is what Superman's all about at the end of the day. He's an aspirational character who shows us what we can be if we choose to be at our best and choose to care for other people. Uh, did Joe Chip ever come back from Omar's show? I guess he decided to stay. Oh, because I noticed we're down significantly <laughs> since we, we've been doing the topic. We need to make, I don't know, we, we need, uh, hmm. but tangents, people don't tune in afterwards for tangents. When they watch the show afterwards, they want to see the topic. We were doing really good. We were getting close to 60 and then Omar's show started. <laughs> and it dipped. <laughs> that jerk. <laughs> Let's well, give, let's give we a piece of our mind. The topic. We, whenever we start the topic is when we lose live viewers, but that's when people tune in that see this show after it's been recorded. That's true. That's why I have to write topic starts. When did the topic start tonight? 107. 107. Okay. Well, let's wrap up with the final book, Jess. Okay. I had never read last son. I, yeah, this is the first time I've read it too. Um, and so someone, someone has been mentioning multiple times that we haven't talked about the Jeff Johns run that he did in New 52 with JRJR. I didn't read that for this. I don't, and Jess didn't as well. I didn't hear a lot of great things about it, so I didn't feel like reading it. So I decided not to. And I don't know if you've read that before, Jess. I haven't. So that's the one thing we didn't read for this. Johnny Irwin is just you know what I want I won't leave for Omar though okay buddy <laughs> we're we're gonna <laughs> Rafael Miranda's still here okay that's good we're almost done with the topic guys well this is an interesting idea do a live Q&A and record the topics that's an interesting idea So, Jess, what did you – you read this much uh, – I read this about a month ago. So yeah. You read it much more recently than I have. So what did you think about it? I read it today. Um, I, I, uh, the idea is that um, – <laughs> And Man 40 just uh, burned Omar. That's hilarious. I thought you'd yeah, like that. Omar is mapping an easy era in X-Men. They're basically combining collected editions of the Omnis. Not too hard or interesting if you ask me. Jess's his favorite okay. comment of the night. <laughs> the comment of the night. Thank you, Ed Man Forty. Um, I this was a, I thought an interesting story that a, a spaceship crashes on Earth. It's a super powered kid that speaks Kryptonese. Um, it coincidentally lands um, uh, near the um, the Kents, and they have. Um, uh, Superman. Wait a sec. Let me make sure. Do you do? Yeah. Da, 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 da. And okay, no. Superman catches the spacecraft as it's entering Earth's atmosphere. I I, I uh, goofed up on on that. Uh, as it um, catches the Earth, he catches it in the Earth's atmosphere, and he uh, and Lois. Um, decide to keep him on their own and he adopts uh the name christopher kent and he is from krypton um where i got mixed up is clark does take the son i mean the boy from krypton to clark's parents um and asks for parenting lessons um and Everybody is at once this kid is discovered, everybody's after him, including Bizarro, the U.S. Army. And most troubling is the fact that General Zod breaks free of the Phantom Zone. Uh, I won't I won't tell you why, but General Zod and Nan and Ursa break free of the Phantom Zone and come to Earth looking for the boy. Um so not only does he have to do with deal with Bizarro and Lex Luthor, um, but he has to deal with um, Zod and Ursa. And he goes to Luthor for help in this case. And Luthor is really, really arrogant and a jerk in this. Um, it's 
I love seeing him be such an arrogant jerk. And I love when he's taken down a peg and he does do some interest. Luther does have an interesting plot line in this book himself. Um, because of course he doesn't like aliens and doesn't like Kryptonians. And um, I, it's just a really, really good story. Um it co-written by Dick Donner as well. Yeah. And then the next one, <laughs> there's several stories in this book. The next one, I didn't even know existed. Escape from Bizarro World with art by Eric Powell of Goon fame. Awesome drawing art. it. Um, and it, it deals with Bizarro creating the Bizarro World and kidnapping superman's father considering him his father because bizarro's the imperfect clone duplicate of superman and so this story deals with superman going to um uh the bizarro world to rescue his father and this scene is taken right out of uh, frankenstein oh yeah <laughs> the monster looks down at the girl uh, playing with the flowers and says pretty and then throws her except he's throwing her off a roof um and here's a i think eric powell does a good job of making superman pretty handsome um given eric powell's style it's it's not as goony as goon but you can still tell that it is pretty much eric powell um <laughs> this is interesting. I just picked up on it. Maybe it's because I grew up in, with a black and white TV, but it goes from black and white on Earth and Bizarro World is in color. Like the Oz. I didn't notice that either. I just noticed that. I didn't realize that either until you said it. Yeah, Bizarro World's in color. Um so it's Bizarro uh, at at his Bizarro finest. There's no Bizarro Damien, which um, what book was that in where there was Bizarro Damien? Superman Rebirth. That was towards the end of the run. That was a great story. That the was montage. great. That was really great. Um, so the the uh, Bizarro book's great, and I loved it. Uh, so, sorry, the Bizarro story, and then it's a series of short stories. Um, from Action Comics 48 page annual I have no idea if this actually came out in reality and they just included it or if they made it up for the book um, it's got it's, it's written by Jeff Johns and Richard Donner and it's got art by a variety of artists uh, and it's a series of short stories and they're they're fun. They're interesting. Some of them are one page, three pages, um, but uh, they're all interesting. It's got Joe Kubert drawing Hawkman like he did in the old days, so that's really cool. And Mon L played a big part in Last Sun and a story in that one um, that one not one shot story, but in that collected edition story. Right. I didn't. Know, yeah. Uh, is Mon L from the Silver Age? Yeah. Okay, and he that's plays a big part in New Krypton, right? Yeah. Okay. That's what um, uh, he he and Superboy had a lot of adventures, uh, and I can't remember it. It was a it was a modern day rewriting of Monel when he got lead poisoning and had to go to the Phantom Zone uh, to keep him from dying. It sounds so lame when you say it like that. When he gets lead poisoning, it's like <laughs> it is what happens, but it's like. Yeah, That's interesting take. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so they have to. Uh, Superman, Superboy banishes him to the on uh, out of the kindness of his heart, so Monel doesn't die to the Phantom Zone, so he lives. Um, but it's also sort of his eyes and ears on what's going on in the Phantom Zone. What's lamer, Monel being allergic to lead or Alan Scott being allergic to wood? <laughs> What's well, lame Monel's not allergic to it. He he got it, and it's killing him. So he didn't. He can't recover from it like Superman recovers from kryptonite. But yeah, the wood thing is completely lame. And the color yellow, right? Wasn't that it too? Yeah, I 
<laughs> I'm glad those things were. I'm glad the color yellow was written out by Jeff Johns. Well, it's yeah, the way he retconned that was brilliant. With I parallax, how do do it? With parallax. Remember? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It happened in the Green Lantern Rebirth. I think Jeff Johns is really able to take silly sil Silver Age concepts and make them modern and interesting, which isn't an easy task to do. Right. I think. I think the three guys who understand superheroes better than anybody else is Jeff Johns, Mark Wade, and Kurt Busiek. Those three are like the trinity of understanding what superheroes are about and what they're for. I agree with that, hundred percent. And Candace is liking this show sight unseen, but she has a new uh, avatar. Women in comics. We're officially off the topic, everybody. So you can come back. Yeah, everybody, come back now. We're on tangent <laughs> again. <laughs> Well, <laughs> he does it so Monel won't die because you don't age in the Phantom Zone. <laughs> well, what was your favorite of all the books? I think my favorite is still Secret Origin out of all the ones that I've read. Uh, They're all, they were all really good. There was it, none of them were bad. They are really good. Um, I I did love them all. Uh, I think I found. Superman and the Legion of Superheroes, my favorite for probably nostalgia purposes, but it was also the, a modern take on them where they're not all goody goodies. S some of them who are in the Legion are jerks, but they still have powers that matter and they, they have powers that can uh, uh, make a difference. Unlike Matter Eater Lad and Bounty <laughs> Boy and triplicate girl who had one killed off and became duo damsel too bad herbie popnecker is not a legion superhero <laughs> i i still have to read those books that fear, i remember the night you ordered that on my on a uh, omni bros <laughs> lou convinced you to order the fat fury lou did right yeah yeah it was just i think it was just lou and i right and lou, lou introduced him to me and i'm like this sounds like the greatest book ever <laughs> the best name i've ever heard herbie popnecker i know yeah and i started looking at it and it it was so outrageously interesting and ridiculous that i and the books were uh, i got fomo because the books were like on the edge of going out of print so i said i gotta go uh get these books right now because they're going <laughs> out of print and i think i ordered all three of them on the air uh two from amazon and one from ebay so Who's Elvis Parker wants to know if we like Paper Girls or Saga better. We have the benefit of Paper Girls being over. Yeah. Uh, I loved it all the way through. Saga, who knows when that's coming back? No I, idea. I'm going to have to say Paper Girls because it's got a conclusion that's satisfying. I don't know when Saga is going to finish. It's crazy. It's been on hiatus for two years, and there's been no solicits at all. And that's still going to be another three hardcovers probably till it's over. Uh maybe when saga gets finished it's going to be more epic than paper girls it's a great read till it's amazing cliffhanger all the, i mean including it's amazing cliffhanger it's really a great read um but paper girls you can read and it's great and interesting and it's finished yeah it's only 30 issues so it's a really quick read yeah candace has a good question and i think uh, Taylor will, would say yes. I think it's not really a Watchmen book. It's a Superman book. It's pretty much a celebration of why Superman makes the DC universe so, um, so valuable and so rich. Without Superman, there wouldn't be a DC universe. That's basically the whole point of the book. And the Watchmen universe is as broken as it is because they have superheroes, but none of them are Superman. If you don't have Superman to hold them all together, the whole universe falls apart, basically. That's the whole theme of the book. Would you agree, Jess? Yeah, I need so, to reread it because I think you liked it better than I did, and I want to reread it um, to uh, to get the impact that it had on you. I can see why people don't like it. I definitely understand it, but I think if you go into it as a celebration of Superman, I think you'll really enjoy it. I think it has really great themes towards the end that come to the forefront about I, Superman. <laughs> I think the real problem is that it's a rebirth book that came out like three years after rebirth was over right it if it had come out on time i think it would have been a much more celebrated book 
I agree. I, I said that in my rebirth video that I just did. Um, uh, that just dropped Thursday. So everybody go watch it. Um, it That's what hurt it the most is, and I think probably the same with three jokers is that people were waiting for those books forever and they lost interest and it was hard for them to get into it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, they started that mystery about the button in 2016 and they didn't really pay off the Dr. Manhattan stuff until 2019. That's way too long. Yeah. Way too long. It should have been like a year max. People's patience does not last that long. No. As a public speaker, I can tell you that people's <laughs> attention span is shockingly low. <laughs> huh? What did you just say? Yeah, especially if, especially if their name is Jess Bragg or Tyler Blunt. Oh, I, don't you dare lump me in with him. How dare you? <laughs> Tyler's worse, but your memory's still kind of iffy uh i don't understand whoops i don't understand the reference but if you say so i mean i don't dislike i've never seen dragon ball but you'll watch it when tyler comes to visit apparently i i, I said that just to get him just to call his bluff and see if he comes up um i i if goku is that's cool I, well, he's the major character of that series, and he does die at some point, and his death is felt throughout the whole show. Um, he dies? He yeah. just ruined it for me. Yeah, you're not going to watch it, Jess. But <laughs> he's like in their version of heaven, and you see him all the time, so it's not like he's gone forever, and he comes back. Oh. Okay. I, I haven't watched a ton of Dragon Ball Z. I watched it as a kid, but it was never one of my favorite shows, even though I enjoyed it. Oh, okay, so you you're up on Dragon Ball Z. My, I never... favorite, an my favorite anime isn't even really an anime, and that's Castlevania. Season oh. four was so good, Jess. You have you just to finish the whole thing, right? Yeah, I binged it all in two days <laughs> during Taylor time. Yeah, I mean they're only twenty minute, twenty to thirty minute episodes, not that long, but it was so good. I, apparently, I've got to watch Superman and Lois, or I'm going to lose out. Yeah, Castlevania will be there for a little bit, so don't. Uh... Don't rush, but it was so good. It was a great ending. Well, okay, this is how I want to spend the rest of my time uh, with uh, Bachelorhood. Uh, <laughs> I want to see Justice League, Snyder Cut Justice League, Castlevania, Superman and Lois, and Falcon and Winter Soldier. Those there are the things I have to see. Are you going to prioritize TV watching over comic reading, you think? No, I think I can do both during the day. The only thing is, though, you have to you and your wife share the TV when she's there. She's not sharing your comic books. Um, we don't share, thing, right? we don't share the TV. Oh, you don't? I thought no, you both used in the sweater closet. Oh, right. Okay. I sorry, I'm not rich, so I didn't know that's how it works. <laughs> we have I have a TV in the back cave, and there's a TV in the living room. Oh, I thought I you didn't want the TV down there because your chairs aren't comfortable. Um, that's where I watch the, but that is where I watch things like, uh, Disney plus shows. Oh, uh, okay. Cause I usually catch those first thing in the morning before she's awake because I know it'll be uninterrupted. Yeah. But I, and I don't want justice league Snyder cut to be, um, interrupted at all. So I it's have, gonna, it's, it's going to have to be at least to go to the bathroom. Four hours, no bathroom break. That's I'm Omni Dog, man. I can do it. All right. All right. I, okay. I believe it when I see it. Um, have you guys uh, got the new Criminal Deluxe Editions? You bet. I, I definitely did. did. Number Run one. Run my shelf. Run my shelf over there. Taylor Jess, got it before I did. I will say Jess was much more panicked than I was. <laughs> We were both concerned. If you're wondering I, why it's out of print, if it's going to be out of print soon, because Jess bought them all. <laughs> Jess bought every copy. And and the icon book, too. And Jess, uh, Candace is talking about your bachelorhood. How many, deliver, how many more deliveries do you have planned until your wife gets home? Uh, <laughs> Candace, I got a huge box from Big Bad Toy Store, so you're right about that. It was uh, the biggest order I've had because my pile, I let my pile of loot get really big uh, until uh, my wife went on vacation. Uh, 
and that I got a big shipment from DCBS today. I got an IST order the other day, uh, Friday, yesterday. Uh, so that might be it for big orders. Although I have twice a month shipping for DCBS. Um, books don't upset her as much as a big box from BBTS would. But that tape they have on there, the BBTS tape. On the big boxes, yeah. It's the BBTS thing. On the li if you when she's around, I order little orders because they don't put that tape on the little boxes. Doc Collector, I mean, we usually go two hours, but I guess we're going a little over. Because Jess has no Jess, the ball and chain is gone. He's a free man. <laughs> don't a, tell your don't tell your wife I said that, Jess. <laughs> the ball and chain? Wait. I'll say this. The better half is gone. I'll say that. Okay, that's true. The good thing is if I ever make your wife mad, I can just send you guys pictures of Sam and Murdoch. And I'll Oh, yeah. The latest one you sent me of Bat Sam and Murdoch were amazing. I have an unlimited supply of those. Okay. Unlimited. Nice. Um, let's see. Gabriel and Jesse get info. I think that is a notable tale. What are you guys talking about? Oh, are you talking about? Oh, okay, you're talking about uh, uh, Goku still. <laughs> Rich no L. Okay. Most guys on a bachelor weekend start digging through the closet for the hidden special magazines and videotapes. Jess orders toys and watches Superman. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm not gonna. I'm. I'm not gonna do that first one. And he, yeah, he wouldn't admit that to the minister of comics either. No. Yeah, the funny thing is I was texting Jess the other day asking what he was doing, and I said, if someone didn't know better, they think I was texting an 11-year-old about their day. <laughs> I'm going to go play with some toys, and I'm going to watch Batman. <laughs> <laughs> that was my plan. Am I texting a 60-year-old or an 11-year-old? You decide. <laughs> and I was late to the show tonight because I was just sitting there looking at my packages of toys. Uh, Isn't that a great feeling when your toys or your comics come in and you unbox them and look at them? Oh my gosh! Yes, it's like I, I I imagine that's how a hunter feels when they bag a deer or, a, or an animal <laughs> they shot. It's like you just look at it and admire what you did. Um. Uh, do I get out of the house? Uh, yeah, I I'm only planning on leaving the house. I have a couple of doctor appointments this week, so it's it's like quarantine for me. I only left the house for. Uh, doctor appointments and uh, the drugstore, and that's all I'm leaving the house for uh, these two weeks. Jess is always under quarantine in retirement. Yeah, I, quarantine was the best time of my life. <laughs> Second best. College was the best. That quarantine year was the best. I don't know. I think these two weeks will be the best of your life. <laughs> that's just starting. <laughs> I declare this the summer of George. <laughs> <laughs> I want to bite into the size. Well, what is he saying? Cheese. I want to bite into cheese the size of a car battery. <laughs> um, I I was wondering about this Justice Society movie myself because it has a short uh attached to it that you can't get on HBO Max. Uh, a lot of those movies have shorts that you can't see on HBO Max. So I was thinking about getting this movie myself. I thought you ordered it already. I haven't yet. It's still oh. up in my tabs, but I haven't opened it. I mean, I haven't ordered it yet. You ordered that other DVD of shorts, right? Yeah, I do have that. That Oh, okay. I should watch that. That's something I should watch this weekend. This week, two weekend, two weeks, whatever it is. Oh, Farhan's still here representing all 33 million of Malaysia. Represent. Uh, let's see. I remember years ago, Lou and Gabe would do late night streams for hours and they would just shoot the breeze. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's a Batman question. I think Taylor should answer this question. Is he asking if you need to know about previous runs or what's the main question here? I've heard that there are stories scattered that are also important. Um, 
it sounds like he's asking if it's a complete read because there are other stories that aren't collected that are important to the book. Well, you have the Omnis and I don't. I just have their trades for back in the day. But I'm pretty sure it has like the resurrection of Ra's al Ghul and some other stuff as well. I think the Omnis are complete. Yeah. I will I, say, I've said this before many times, I wouldn't read Grant Morrison's Batman if you're newer to Batman comics. You have to know a lot about Silver Age stuff and just previous incarnations of Batman. I would say it's like the PhD level Batman. So if you're newer to Batman, get some other Batman books under your belt and then return to it and it'll make a lot more sense to you. And it may help to look up things like Batman of Zoran R, Robin Dies at Dawn, because Grant Morrison's run is about how every era of Batman actually happened. The 60s goofy Silver Age things happened where Robin and the Joker got in a laughing contest, all that stuff. He, he kind of turns that into they were gassed by the, by the Joker and the Scarecrow one too many times. Every single era of Batman matters. So the more you know about those eras of Batman, the more meaningful it will be to you. That's my point. But the Omnis are complete, though. It's exactly why I had you explain that, because that's perfect. If this is Q&A time, sell me on the attributes of the Madman character. Hmm. Um, you have to enjoy Allred's art, for, first of all, because it's all Allred art. And he writes Madman as a very bizarre. Uh, it, it's it's bizarre, and uh, I don't want to say goofy, but it's um, it's it's a it's a character that is sort of a, a satire and s serious, but he's. He's funny and gets in weird situations. He's like, he's like, uh, but this is harder than I thought to describe. He's, a, <laughs> he's, um, he's a fun, interesting character. You have to go into it. Uh, I've been staring at my madman statue for inspiration. Um, you have to go into it, um, knowing that it, it, it's, it's going to be bizarre, but interesting and funny. Um, and the stories do, I mean, the, the stories, uh, do tell a story. It's not just a bunch of random acts of goofiness. Um, but it is out there. It, um, it has a lot of characters that are wacky and weird. Uh, but I always found it to be a really refreshing fun thing to read when you get tired of superhero comics to read a to read madman for a while because it it shifts your focus into sort of just having fun and not taking things too seriously and enjoying the art um but i i have found i didn't know until actually till i think i went on omni bros that not everybody enjoys Mike Allred's art. I do, but not everybody does. So it may be an acquired taste. Um, so you may want to sample some things online before you buy a book. He is, I uh, think this summer, this is another thing that pisses me off. I've got Atomica and Gargantua which are impossible to find. And now he's reprinting everything in an omnibus format, um, taking all those stories. I don't even have any whales anymore. Um, so the, the best thing I can say is that it, it, it is a fun, lighthearted, twisted, complex, interesting, fun experience. Uh, but you definitely need to sample it first because it's not for everyone. Like, I don't think Taylor or Tyler would enjoy it. Wow. I, There's very I, few things. I mean, if it's not TMT, TMNT or Spider-Man, Tyler probably won't enjoy it. <laughs> um, I, I don't think, yeah, I don't think it's a book for you guys because 
there's not a lot of meat in it. It's it's fluffy and fun. I feel like Tyler would love it then. Maybe I don't know. It'd be interesting to see if he if he would. Well, you'll have everybody will have the chance to get their hands on it when it comes out this summer. Um, I love it. I mean, I love it so much that I got this statue of him. Um, that's impossible to. Well, I don't know. You could probably find it on eBay for a couple hundred bucks, but that's the two. That's what started my statue collection: my Madman statue and my dream of Morpheus. Well, Jess, you ready to call it a night? Jess, Agent Carter is hot. You should watch that. I've heard that. Uh, yeah. Oh, Johnny Airwindows. He we he deserves an answer because it was twenty dollars. Yeah. Uh, I know this may be a tangent, but what are the quality of the TKO trades? Uh, you have you read them both waves or just the second wave? I have. Remember, we got the third wave for free from TKO to review them. Oh yeah, that's right. We read the entire. I read. Here's what I have. I have Sarah and Goodnight Paradise from the first wave. Those are both. Uh, Sarah's awesome. Goodnight Paradise is really good. I only have Sentient from the second wave because all I heard is good. And I love Sentient. That's the only one you should get from the second wave. And I have all the third wave. Um. And we loved. I would say loved. I enjoyed all of the third wave besides the pool, which is one of the worst comics I've ever read. The pull, yeah. Uh, Steve Orla Je Jess and I are not fans of Steve Orlando. <laughs> yeah, he's so up and down for me. I liked his Supergirl. Uh, boy, that pull was that, that's in the that's in the donate pile. I gotta get rid of that. I did not enjoy it at all. So TKO, I think, is hit or miss, but their books that hit are really good. You you can get the entire first wave and and be really happy. All four books were at least really really good and sarah is by garth ennis and it's fantastic the fearsome dr fang is great too and then there's um good night paradise was so good good night paradise is great and then there's um like the seven soldiers of sin or something or uh what's it called does the chat know oh. what the fourth book is in the first wave uh and Candace is asking about Crime Corner when we're doing that again. Oh, uh, are we doing Sleeper and what are we doing? I think we want to do Sleeper and Reckless because the second Reckless volume just came out. Okay. Or we could just do Reckless. Uh, well, I have Sleeper. So we do want to do it sooner rather than later. We went a couple months without doing Crime Corner until recently. So we don't want to go that long again. No, I don't. You're right. Um, she also asked, okay, that's good for thought about Mad Men, the library editions. Oh, okay, or $99 each. It's library editions. That's going to be, that's cool. Okay. Um, I'm just looking at the chat. Are we get? I think we are not getting bad. Uh, lots. I might cave soon and buy in trades or those two hardcovers. I, I bought it in trades and wait, would I get some mixture like a hardcover and two <laughs> trades? Yeah. Yeah. So annoying. I'm, I'm still going to hold out a little bit because I already read it, so I don't need it, but I don't have really high hopes at this point. DC, yeah. DC knows how to break your heart. Yeah. Jack Kirby said the comics break your heart, but DC definitely breaks your heart. Um, I sold all those books, Ant Man 40, because I didn't find any of them interesting. Um, so, uh, no, I, I, I sold Silver Age Thor as soon as it got expensive on eBay. Uh, yeah, you have to go back to your life. We've been on for two and a half hours. My wife is still at home, so I'm not untethered <laughs> like you are. Uh, yeah, I got to go out and let the dog go. Probably, uh, I won't be on tether for another thirty years. Probably. 
thank you, everybody who has. Um, uh, I'm, I'm reading the uh, chat still. Oh, Atit has a good point that I bought them in trade. So doesn't that guarantee we get a deluxe? That is a good point. That that is a formula that rings true constantly. <laughs> Candace, you're definitely right. There's too many comics to read. Yeah. Not that time. Thank you for the compliment, Candace. I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Because I I need feedback like that to keep me going. Um so thank you for tuning in. Uh I appreciate everybody that, that tuned in and hung in there for the uh <clears throat> Hung in there for the topic, which apparently is not as interesting as the tangents. Um, maybe we should split it into two things, <laughs> Q&A and topic. Uh, that's not a, necessarily a bad idea. Uh, we can definitely talk about that. Um, thank you to the Minister of Comics. Would you like to tell us where to find you on Instagram? You can find me at Minister of Comics on Instagram, where I post reviews, I post hauls, I post my toy photography pictures. As I was got into this this hobby by Jess and Tyler, who ruined my life. So at Minister of Comics. Yes, and you can find me on Instagram under Omnidogs underscore Vault, and those uh, are both in the description if you want to click on them and see where we are on Instagram. So thank you very much to the chat. Thank you, Johnny Airwindows, for flipping us that 20. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll see what we um, is left after YouTube takes their chunk. <laughs> so peace and love, peace and love. Thank you very much, everybody, and have a good evening.